And uh, we are doing our best to try to stream the game, but, you know, when it's a collection of do-it-yourself dads and uh, retired Hall of Fame coaches, you know. <laughs> Who knows nothing about technology. Your, I, your <laughs> IT department, you get what you get, right? So I don't even know if we're on yet, honestly. Let's see. Yeah, I think we are. I got a notification. All right. So we are in the bottom half of the first. Y'all missed the top half of the first. The Raiders went down in order. Uh, three up, three down, as John Montour was on the mound for the, for the Wolves. And uh, we're going we're gonna to catch up here. Cody Corrales just grounded out to third baseman Gavin Nix. And uh, Easton LeBlanc is hitting right now for the Wolves. Kind of give us a give us a second here to try to get our wits about us. Let's see. I know there's a ton of people <coughs> asking me for the link here <coughs> to all those people who are trying to chime in right now. Uh, we're sorry, but uh, we had some technical difficulties. But Easton LeBlanc draws a walk. It's going to bring up the uh, designated hitter for today, number 15, Brennan Villa. 15, Brennan Villa. Let's see, we are in the bottom. Okay, wait, so. Well, now the keys aren't working. Why wouldn't the keys be working? Oh, man. It's one of these mornings, or one of these afternoons, I should say. So Brennan Villa drives the ball into right field. It's going to fall in. Easton LeBlanc is on his way to third base. We're going to read the throw at first. LeBlanc goes first to third on the single by Brennan Villa, which is going to bring up catcher number nine, Cooper Winchester. Yeah, we are. Uh, I don't know if. Does it, oh, geez, um, what do we have going on here? Stop. What happened? Why do we have this here? Winchester takes ball up. Sorry about this, but all of our... Oh. Get rid of that. Wolves, Wolves first and third. I got how do I get this graphic off? Winchester shot drives the ball to right field. We're going to have a shot at the plate, and he is gunned oh. down. Oh, he drops the ball, but they're going to say that he yeah. was. So Winchester with a line drive to right field. Easton LeBlanc was tagged out at home plate by the throw from the right fielder. Line drive, really right, right at him. It was uh, Gavin Kennedy, it looks like. And why, why in the world would this thing show up?
All right, we're back. The GOAT Show continues here on the broadcast as uh, a bunch of dads who really are not IT guys are trying to figure out how to work this computer and what exactly is happening. Um, our broadcast seems to be going to hell in a handbag really fast. And we're sorry for everybody who's logging in who is used to actually uh, a decent show. Um, the camera's all jacked up. Had a few too many drinks last night. So it's kind of cattywampus. John Montour is on the mound right now, and we are in the top half of the second inning. No score. We got, yeah, nothing, nothing. And we have, who's hitting right here? Uh, Evan Berg is in the batter's box here. So what did Ramirez do? I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, I, just, hey. I have no idea. I feel like Bob Euchre in the beginning <laughs> of Major League right now. <laughs> oh, you know, what else can go wrong type of thing. Hold on a second while I talk to our IT people. As computers will have it, they'll do their own thing, start glitching out. But I think we figured it out. Oh, my gosh. Can we just talk baseball instead of figuring out all the stupid computer stuff? I mean, it works great most of the time, but I don't know. I just decided that today, you know what? Throw a monkey wrench and everything. So 0-2 to Aiden Gennard. He's playing first base today. What did Berg do? He walked? He drew a walk. Okay, so he walked. We're going to play catch up here. All you people who are watching. Hunter makes a move to first. I would show you the center field camera, but, uh, I mean, unless you want to check out John Montour's cleats, because uh, that's what it's focused in on right now. It's not going to work. So, Gennard pops up to center, uh, shortstop. A, uh, Easton LeBlanc underneath it, and that's going to retire Gennard for the first out of the inning. So a pop-up six. It's going to bring up number 22, Lenny Klein, who is the catcher for the Raiders. So now that I think we got some visual, we can kind of uh, talk a little baseball here. we got something for the fans to look at for the time being. Um, eventually, we'll get that center field camera straightened out. Ooh, that's Line. a deep drive into left field. Brennan Villa's getting turned around, although he is behind it he now. Got a very nice reaction. Really good job. Very nice. Of, no, I'm sorry. That's not Brennan Villa. Robertson. That is actually Jude Robertson in left field. I'm, I apologize. I thought that was Brennan. But uh, it's Jude Robertson left field. Man, he just plays an, he plays a really good outfield. Roberts, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's athletic. He got his hips. Man, he looked like a uh, kind of a, a defensive back right there. Getting his hips around and Jeff, shifting he, uh, different that directions. Was, that was a shot. It was smoked up against the fence. Yeah, that ball was that ball was touched right there by Lenny Klein. Although he does fly out to seven for the second out of the inning. Another line drive. Another to right line field. drive to the right fielder, James Hardwick. And the uh, the Raiders are going to go down right there. So they had a, they left a one runner on. 
And uh, we're going to go back down to the bottom half of the second inning. So with that being said, we're going to stick around. I'm with the uh, – oh, my gosh. Rick Mahler. Bro, come, come, <laughs> I'm coming, Rick. Jeff is a little stressed I'm coming, right Rick. now. A little stressed. I was about to say Lenny Russell, but I'm like, and then my mind was like, no, Lenny's going to fix the camera. <laughs> so Rick Malden to my left. Lenny, Lenny Russell climbing the ladder in the center field so he can fix the uh, the center field camera. And uh, we got the Rummel Raiders taking on the St. Paul's Wolves. So what we're going to do is we're going to go read out the starting lineups for both teams. Leading off for the Rumble Raiders is going to be number seven, Ruben Ramirez, who is in left field. And I want to say he grounded out. No, Mikey Ryan grounded out, who is the second hole hitter in a, into a fielder's choice. And then Gavin Nix. Oh, man, I forget what he did. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, Gavin Nix is hitting third. Hitting fourth is number uh, number nine, Evan Berg. He's in center field. Hitting fifth, number 44, Aiden Gennard. He's at first base. Hitting sixth, number 22, Lenny Klein behind the plate. Hitting seventh, number 12, Gavin Kennedy is in right field. Hitting eighth, number 10, Dominic uh, Mendieta. He's de the designated hitter for today. And hitting ninth, number 15, Brant Frey. He is at second base. And the pitcher for... The Raiders is number 20, Connor Parrott. Perot, maybe? Parrott? Parrott? Perot? I don't know. Somebody's going to tell me. Yes. Okay. So in the bottom half of the second inning, it's going to be left fielder, number 14, Jude Roberts. Yeah, well, Bully, we'll put the shield back on there for you if that's what you want. <laughs> so that you can literally see nothing. So Roberts takes the breaking pitch down in the zone for ball two. Off-speed pitch misses down and away. Uh, I believe it's 3-0, yeah, although it's the scoreboard seems to be I having just as many technical difficulties as we do. I think it's 3-0. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, fun times here at the ballpark, especially if you're the WPBN broadcast. Goes to three and one. Now I'm trying to play catch up with the... Roberts pops up this up one up to right field. It's in the sun. Looks like Gennard's going to get underneath it at first base, and he's going to retire Jude Roberts. It's a pop out to three... Nine, eight, base hit. Corral is grounded. Did he ground out? I can't remember. All right, that's going to bring up number 13, Brody Bootery. For you guys that don't know, we have two games today. Oh, our center field camera's up. Look at that. Lenny Russell. I mean, great job. Great job getting us back up. A little off-speed pitch down in the zone, misses. So one ball, one strike, one out, Brody Bootery. We finally figured out how to get some shade up here. Oh, Bootery is going to be hit nice by the job. pitch. It's one of the things the uh, the Wolves are, uh, they practice on, man. They don't want to move the feet. You know, you try to protect yourself as best you can. But... Uh, there's a penalty if you get out of the way of a ball. Absolutely. <laughs> verbal. Try to protect, but you uh, a you get verbal penalty. Yeah. So it's going to bring up the first baseman, number six, Cameron Kayami, as Bootery leads off a of first. Fastball down in the zone, misses. Nice block by the catch. I shouldn't even really say in the zone. It's not in the zone. No. It's just down. <laughs> yeah. All right. So 0 1 to Kayami. Let's see if I can pull up some game changer action. Ball game was canceled yesterday because of rain. Oh, so, yeah. Um, I mean, if, and if you live in this area, you know it was, there's it no was shot. Bad. Yeah. So they'll only be playing two this year.
Yeah, that's unfortunate because you always want to play as many games against the Raiders as yes, possible. Yes. It's my alma mater. That's I love to see him, I love to see him play as many games as possible against them. Give yeah. Frankie Cazzo a hard time. Talk some trash. Uh, Coach Mick mentioned they're playing for. There's a, a, a plaque over there that Rummel and St. Paul's play for now. Oh yeah, there is. Yeah, they they so. started that last year. So the ball four, and Kaimi is going to draw the walk, advancing Boudry to second base. It's going to bring up number seven, the third baseman Marcus Newfield. And we're not live, of course. Maybe the Raiders are live. Well, that's not going to do any good because I can't get the stats for the for the Wolves. So, uh, so I'd love to be able to say that everybody's hitting 400 and driving in runs and whatnot, but the truth is they ain't. Oh, so like first, a, first and sorry. second, one out. Newfield in the box. Newfield with a, it looks like it's going to be drop. a bloop single. It's going to drop just in. In shallow right field, the, the shortstop, Mikey Ryan, slips, gets up, fires the ball into the cutoff. And that's going to load the bases as Bootery slams on the brakes. <laughs> so that's going to bring up the pitcher, John Montour, who in his last, his last time he pitched, he got two hits, base yes. hits up the middle. So, yep. uh, you know, he's a National League guy for sure. <laughs> and uh, he's going to try to help his own cause. There's no one else who understands the value of pitching in a game that you are hitting in. It's the pitcher trying to drive in runs for himself. A few guys who are listening right now have been on the mound, and they would love to have the opportunity to, to help their own cause. Montour takes fastball down in the zone for ball one. I mean, this is when you got to say, hey, listen, this is the pitcher. And I'm not saying, I'm not taking anything against Montour because right. he's hitting 667 this year as he is two for three and his only three at-bats that he had. But oh, you're the man. you got to go right at him. Thank, Thank you. A little sustenance. Another fastball misses off the plate. Parent looked like he... He flint. Yes, he, he did. He, he kind of. Oh no! I hate to see that oh, on the mound. Oh my goodness! He is wincing in pain right now after that pitch. And man, that's not a good sign right there. I, you know, seems to be in some pain right now. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, he threw that pitch. It looked like there was a lot taken off of it. Oh, thank you. He's is hurting. that what I think it is? Yes. Oh, that's what I need right now. All right, well, we hope we hope he's okay. And I think Kazo's going to wind up going to the pen right there. I don't like the way that he's holding his arm right no. there. It just does not, does not look favorable for a baseball player. And uh, we wish him the best as far as show like, hopefully, that, uh, hopefully it's nothing, nothing too serious. It is enough to... To get some relief in, and I think what we're going to see is, is this number three? Peyton Spadoni is going to wind up coming in for Parrot. Parrot. I don't know, Bully. How do you pronounce it? Tell me. I hope he's, hope he's okay. Looks like the St. Paul's... Um Maybe the trainer's going to go over there check and, and take a look at that. Yeah, let's let's get him to take a look at it. So, just a little recap how we got here. Rained out last night, and uh, did we? Oh my gosh, I can't even remember if we played midweek. Did we play midweek? Yes, we played <laughs> we Brother played. Martin and we beat did. Brother Martin. Jeez, oh, how do I forget uh, that? And so yeah, Cooper we Winchester uh, wins the ball game at the end of the game. Oh, man, I forgot <laughs> we even did that. I'm trying to. I'm still trying to get right from all this technical difficulties. I'm out of my rhythm, right? I just, you don't have a good rhythm. Baseball players, you know, coach, we need a good yes. rhythm, right? Pre-game rhythm, and my whole pre-game rhythm was just thrown off. Well, I, I will so. tell you this: um, coaches use certain terminologies through the career, and um, I used to use the, the one of bottom of the set, bottom of the seventh, two outs. Um, a guy at third or a guy at second, and you got full count or you got two strikes on you, you got to live for that. And that's what Cooper did the other day. I mean, and just came up with a great bottom of the, bottom of the seventh, two outs. But here's the other thing, too. Here's the other thing about that whole inning. That doesn't happen 
unless Brennan Villa Absolutely. doesn't have the at bat that he has. Absolutely. And he he had an incredible at bat, fighting off several pitches and draws the walk. Yes. He draws the walk. He gets on base with two outs, and that's that's the biggest thing. I mean, we talk about the hit, yeah, but the hit doesn't happen unless we have that at bat. And uh, and then how did he get? He to gets second? the second on the pass, pass ball, ball kind of right. handcuffed. Yeah. Handcuffed the catcher, um, Prather, and uh, got to the wall. And winds up, the winning run winds up getting to second base. And, and with the base open, and, uh, you know, having to have, to have to make that throw all the way across the diamond, they decide to pitch yes. to the batter, and the batter winds up hitting it for a, uh, for a base hit. So and we're still wondering uh, why. Yeah, uh, still that's a uh, big question that I had. But Left regardless, batter. we'll take it. Yes. And uh, John Montour is stepping in the batter's box. Um, Spadoni is actually is going to relieve Parat. So base is loaded, one out. It's a 2-0 count. Spadoni inherits the 2-0 count. Fastball for a strike right there. I think it was a fastball. Maybe a little cutter. Maybe like a little wrinkle in there. Coach caslow has got to be a little bit worried because they're in district play right now. And yeah. having to use pitchers today, you, know, you yeah, don't want to lose mean, a guy in the first, second inning. Yeah, you got a doubleheader yes. today. We are playing two, which is beautiful because it's actually... Oh, so the hit by pitch is going to bring a run in. Although John Montour gets hit by a pitch in his pitching arm, he's going to be okay with it only because it has a run to the score and he's on the mound. So Montour is hit by a pitch. We're going to see a courtesy runner, runner in the form of Braden Ferizo, and I'm going to get a pen that works. Hold on. As I was discussing earlier, they're playing for a little plaque over here that brother Alfred, one of the most beloved brothers at, at St. Paul's, he made the plaque, so each year we do it. Well, since we couldn't play yesterday, what they're doing today is if they split, whoever has the most runs. Ah. So I said, well, that, that really sets you up there for people who want to score. Yeah. So. So Corrales drives the ball deep into left center field. Going to be an easy catch and go. We're going to come up firing oh, off wow. the plate. Wow. So for now, the sacrifice fly went, works. Coach Cazzo is yelling that he he took off too early, but in reality, I actually thought he was way too late. Like I thought he was going to get thrown out, given the I fact. Well, if it had cut the ball, if it had cut them out, how to play? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I, <laughs> I know. I know. Frankie's going to put up a fight at any oh, yeah. chance he gets, but I gotta. I got to tell him, um, it was almost the opposite. He left a little too late. And the throw coming in from Evan Berg was up the line. The run easily scores. Everybody advances on the throw that went to the backstop. And that's going to bring up Easton LeBlanc, number three, the shortstop. So with two outs, the Raiders go up 2 nothing. Well, what happened there was the center fielder is the one that caught the ball. Yep. He threw to the third baseman. That should have been the first baseman over there making that cut. Third baseman should have been over. So I think he got confused. Right, The center field didn't know who to throw it to. Yeah. And it's where it ended up going over toward third first base. So LeBlanc oh. jam job back to Spadoni, and that's going to end the threat. So the Wolves leave two out on the bases, but they do pick up two. It's going to push the score to 2 nothing as we head to the top half of the third inning. And uh, let's see, due up for the Raiders is going to be, although I think Gavin Kennedy actually hit. I don't know. We'll see who comes up when they come up. I forgot to write it down. Maybe I was looking for something. I'm going to take a sip of this drink that Lenny gave me. All right. How do we get the scoreboard back on there? Uh, oh, my gosh. That's some strong water. Um, scoreboard. Where is that one ahead of Ken? So let's see. I don't want to press too many buttons because all the headaches we've had already. Today. Uh, you got to go to all. Go to all. Okay. And hit this one right here. But I think this is not working correctly. I don't know why this is like jacked up. Ah, oh, you dirty mug. Hold on. <laughs>
Oh my gosh. This is just a, a fiasco right now. What's wrong with this? Well, I can tell you right now, we're not going to have the scoreboard, so you're going to have to leave it up to me. I don't know. It seems like it's acting crazy right now. I don't know. Just for some reason, I, it doesn't want to work. It's acting crazy. It's like we're married or something, and it's my wife. Just doesn't want to cooperate. So, hitting eighth, number 10, Dominic Mendieta. He's the designated hitter today. He fouls it off. So, it's a 1 1 count. So, I don't know why. Okay, well. Bully actually liked Very that. Very nice pitch down low. Right there. Fastball. So. Two and one. Oh my gosh. Why is that happening? Fastball up misses. To go to three and one. So three balls, one strike to Mendieta. John Montour on the mound. Catches the outside part of the plate there for strike. Oh, you got us. You got us up. Okay, good. All right. So we're back. We're not going to give you guys the scoreboard because the scoreboard, the buttons for some stupid reason are just chaotic right now and they don't work. So 3-2 to the leadoff hitter, Mendieta, who is the designated hitter. Nice. Swings through for a fastball strikeout. So Montour. Nice pitch. Gets a strikeout right there. A little He's high. Gonna bring out Brant Frey. Second baseman. Hmm. All right. So that camera's good. All right. We got the visuals. Scoreboard's a little jacked up. High fastball. So Montour misses up high with a with a fastball. Brings the count to one ball, no strikes. One out. Out in front of it, fouls it off. It's 2 nothing Wolves. Top half of the third inning. We'll do our best to keep reminding you guys of the score if you're just tuning in. <coughs> we are in the top of the third. And Montour misses downstairs. Two balls, one strike, one out. Ooh, just off the plate there. <coughs> Bringing the count to three balls and one strike. Catches the outside part of the plate right there for strike two. Misses downstairs. So Frey's going to draw a walk. It's going to bring up the left fielder, Ruben Ramirez. So one out in the top half of the lineup. Ramirez swinging the lipstick bat. The hot pink. Nice breaker. Yep. Breaking pitch catches the outside part of the plate right there for strike one. So oh, no balls, one strike, one out. Runner on first base. Breaking pitch misses. Not a bad pitch. No, no. Not a bad pitch at all. Good pitch. Just off the plate. Montour with a snap throw to first base. Actually hits Frey in the leg. Ramirez a little late on that fastball. Drives it straight back over the uh, WPBN streaming deck, which now has a... Uh, now has some cover. <laughs> it only took us four years to prop up a tent that doesn't fit. 
Uh, but it is shade, and I will tell you, it is very pleasant right now. Ramirez takes the breaking pitch for strike three, goes down looking, and with two outs, that's going to bring up the LSU commit number two, Mikey Ryan, who hit a hot shot to third base, handled easily by Marcus Newfield in his first at-bat. Grounded into a fielder's choice. But you got to be careful with Ryan. He can put it in the trees at any given moment. Is he related to Coach Ryan that was that? Rumble? You know, I honestly, I don't know. <clears throat> okay, I was just. I don't. Ryan hitting from the right side. Got some really nice snap with his, with his swing. Takes the fastball in for strike one, bringing the count to one ball, one strike, two outs, top half of the third inning. He could tie it in one swing. Got some juice. That ball misses upstairs. It wasn't that high. Hey, John's all around strike zone. Yeah. Baiting him to swing at a, a pitch kind of like floating around the zone. We definitely don't want to put something out over the plate. This dude will hit it to Highway 21. Montour fires. Big hack by Ryan. He swings through it. Snap throw from the catcher. Winchester is too late over at first, and Frey dives back safely. So 2-2, two, two, two outs. Frey I, leading off of first base. I don't think I'd give him another one of those. Got him swinging to end the inning on the breaking pitch. So Mikey Ryan goes down swinging for the third out of the inning. John Montour doing his thing. Tell you, I, I can't say enough about Montour with the command oh. that he has with multiple pitches. I mean, that is just, it's really like, he's been the best kept secret that we've had, I guess, over the last few years because in his first year of pitching varsity, he has been outstanding. He really has been. Well, he's fallen behind and he's come back. Yeah. It's not like he, he's falling behind, he's walking people, he's... He and walked the one guy, but it was still a good pitch. Yeah, and the truth is, is you know, and he'll tell you he doesn't have electric stuff, but he knows how to use his stuff the right way he to complement what it is that he's doing. You know, and that's 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 pitching. I mean, that's you know, it wasn't long ago where some of the best pitchers in in the big leagues they weren't all throwing ninety five that's, plus, right? That's I mean. Right. You look at that mid-90s era where you had the best staff in baseball in the form of uh, the uh, Atlanta Braves. And while they could rear back and fire in the form of Smoltz and, and Glavin and, and Maddox and, and Wohler, you know, all those guys, like, they could do it, but they chose to make the ball move, you know, yes, and, and, and complimenting pitches. And, you know, I think Maddox, I want to say he lived, and Bully can correct me, he's listening. I think he lived anywhere between... You know, 86 he and did. maybe he, 90 that's, to that's 91. He, but, I mean, I mean, you talk about somebody who could just make the ball move, oh. and, man. He was a, uh, a high school coach's pitch. dream. Yeah. To tell their kids, look here, at 86 mile an hour, at 87 mile an hour, she's shutting people down because he knew where to put the ball. That's right. Brendan Villa steps in the batter's box and takes a breaking pitch high in the zone for strike one. Villa with a base hit in his first at bat, drove a line drive to, to right field. Looks like we're going to have a little conversation. Maybe there was a little mix-up right there. Lenny Klein and uh, Spadoni trying to get on the same page here. Not really sure. I, I looked down on there. He sailed it way over the catcher's head. Ah, Everybody okay. said. Oh, okay. Shaq would have had problem catching that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably not good. So Spadoni rare back fires, misses up and away. Two balls, one strike, nobody out. Big hack right there oh. by Villa, swings Long through swing. the fastball. 2-2. Two -two. Now we're flipping over to K's out in the K zone out there. Oh, all right. I okay. asked two Rumble dads. I said, um, do you all mind flipping these over for us? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they were laughing about it. <laughs> yeah, they want to. They want to. They want to flip over a K when yes. they strike or something. Yes, like that. yes, yes. 
So 3-2 two, two to Villa. Swings through the fastball for strike one. The leadoff guy goes down for the Wolves. It's going to bring up Cooper Winchester, who lined out to right field in his first at bat. Fastball up and away, misses. Talked to Coop before the game started. He said he's starting to see the ball better. He said he said it's, it's Yeah, he's been back and forth. His rhythm has been off. Oh, he just just, just underneath un that one. Drives barely. that one to deep right center field, and the center fielder is going to wind up catching it for a fly out. But uh, he's I mean, now he's hitting it in the gaps right there. You know, his balls are having some more juice to them. Yeah, he got a little he got a little underneath that one. Yeah, I think a little that was bit. probably a little too low. But uh fly out there. But uh I mean he was saying he's seeing the ball a little bit better. He's been really, really streaky back and forth. Jude Roberts takes a break and pitch down into the zone for ball one. Two nothing Raiders, bottom half of the third inning. I know we don't have a scoreboard. We had some technical difficulties. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, Jude, Jude is just an athletic yeah. looking player. I mean, yes. he's got the, the, the legs for that. He's just really a good, good looking kid. Oh, oh take another breath. fastball. And Roberts didn't like that one too much. He's a little aggravated. Tosses, I say tosses, spikes his bat into the on deck circle. <laughs> Watch out, Brody Bootery. <laughs> Yeah, I've always wondered about that. Yeah. You you get hit, and you try to take out your boy on deck. Yo, like, teammate, what sense yes. does that make? Yeah. <laughs> Jude being a competitor over there, that's what they'll call that anger on the field. Oh, he's a competitor. You got to watch it, though. You don't want to hurt your boy on deck. He's got to come up there and hit, try to drive right. you in. So Bootery takes the ball. One ball, no strikes. Two outs. Jude takes off run. It's a high fastball. Uh, Klein's not going to be able to handle that one as it skims off the top half of his glove, gets all the way to the backstop, and Jude is going to be successful at getting the second base. So a runner in scoring position with a 2-0 count, two outs. Catcher's earpiece must have been bad. It looked like that might have been a... Um, was that a miscommunication Yeah, I there? think. It was a high fastball. Bootery hits a hard ground ball over to third base. They check in him, but ooh, is it two outs anyway? Yeah. yeah. And that's going to retire the side right there on the ground out to third baseman Gavin Nix. Hit my pitch. Five, three. So we're heading to the top half of the fourth inning in game one of this doubleheader against the Raiders. Wolves have a 2 nothing lead. John Montour coming out for his fourth inning of work. Okay. Let's see if I can pull up. Let's see if I can pull up the Raiders game changer. Speaking of game changer, I got a notification that uh, Catholic finally lost. I never thought they were actually going to lose. As good as that team is. So they fall four to three against some team that I have no idea where they are. Winter Park Wildcats varsity. They lost four to three. I know everybody's been keeping Winter an eye Park. on those guys. Winter Park. Yep. Sound like a, doesn't sound like a Louisiana team though. No, uh, -uh we would probably. <laughs> know who that is. Oh, okay, good. We got the uh, the Raiders game changer is on. Not that it does us any good, because I can't see exactly what baseman, our players and does are. Does it have their overall stats. record on there? It does. It does, actually. The, the Raiders are 10-4 and four right now, as we sit 9-5. and five. So two fairly evenly matched yes. teams. It's going to bring up the La Tech commit, Gavin Nix, who takes a fastball up. I like Gavin. I, I've had a chance to, to coach him in the, in the fall for a few games. I mean, uh, was it, over the summer he came and played with us. That Knights group, but uh, they—he's uh, a good kid, a good good player. Got a really quick bat. He's sitting three hole right now for the Raiders, playing third base. 
A little out in front on that ball. He drives it into the first base dugout. So two balls, one strike. Man, I could, I could do this all day. I'm in the shade. <laughs> yeah, I guess you two could. Yeah, y'all look, really look very comfortable over there in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, we're going to stick the old man in the sun. We're going to scoot down. Scoot I'm down. good. Let him get in. My wife told me I need to get sun on my head. She said, <laughs> no, you're no. getting that farmer's look on your head, she said. 3-1 <laughs> pitch. Misses oh. just down, and Gavin Nix is going to have a leadoff walk. So the leadoff runner's on. It's going to bring up number nine, Evan Berg. You know, I know you don't want to walk the leadoff guy. You never want to walk the leadoff guy. But in the same sense, with Knicks, the fact that he's on first base and not on not hitting an extra base hit, it's actually not a not a horrible thing. Right. You know, because the double play is still in order and. And we can argue about that. I don't know. Yeah, but. statistics were not really that big of a thing. Yeah, right. 80% <laughs> Jeff, Jeff and I. 80% of all stats are made oh, up on the spot. <laughs> you know, because I see him, and I look at a kid who could put the ball out of the ballpark yeah. and, and, and play to run in one swing. And, ooh, get it quick, get it quick. Nubbed and we'll it. take the out. Yep. Okay. So a nubber with some really nice English on it by uh, – Evan Berg goes right to Kayami at first base. It's going to be a three unassisted for the out. Nix does move up, so he does get in scoring position at the cost of an out. And that's going to bring up number 44, Aiden Gennard, son of Ryan Gennard, who I played ball with, good friends with. We were on the state championship team. He won state his senior year at Rumble, 98. Hmm. Sorry, 97. 97. My senior year was 98. Montour misses upstairs for, with a fastball. Let's see. Um, oh good. They do have the names in here. Good for the Raiders. Good for the Raiders oh, uh, game changer person who put the the name are the visiting names in. I say visiting, hey, but Coop. the opposing names, I should say. I think somebody missed a signal there. We're going to talk this one over. Going to make sure we're all on the same page. Not a bad thing, though. See, what Montour did was he was delivering the pitch as Nix is going back to first base. So if that ball does get put in play, it makes it harder for Nix to actually score because his momentum is actually heading back towards second base. So it kind of steals a couple steps from the runner in scoring position. So... Two balls, no strikes, one out to Aiden Gennard, who popped up to shortstop in his, in his first at-bat. I ain't going to lie. Aiden looks a lot more physical than his dad, Ryan, did in, in his <laughs> age. And I will tell Ryan that. <laughs> if size and strength ran in the Gennard family, it ran right past Ryan. Right at Aiden. I'm just messing. Nice. Aiden took a fastball right there, bringing the count to three balls, one strike. No, Ryan was a super athlete. Man, fast as all get up. Hit the ball. Really good ball player. Yeah, we don't want him walking up here into the press, into the, <laughs> yeah. the box here. Yeah. Montour delivers. The fastball misses down and away. So with one out, we got runners on first and second. Gennard draws the walk. It's going to bring up number the catcher, number 22, Lenny Klein who drove a ball deep to left field in his previous at-bat. Jude Roberts made a really good play, shifted his hips around probably two or three times in order to get that ball because it had some spin on it. So runners on first and second, one out. Montour checks the runner at second, delivers. Misses upstairs with a fastball for ball one. Throw this hamburger in the air fryer. Kind of cool down on me. LeBron, LeBlanc trying to keep Knicks close. Breaking pitch taken for strike one. John's got to get that breaking ball just a little bit further down. I mean, I know it's a get me over. 
because it's an aggressive hitting count. Yeah. You just don't want to leave that breaking pitch right up, now. up in the air or up in the zone like that. So two balls, one strike, one out to Lenny Klein. A little clapping going on by the Raider fan club. Big hack right there by Lenny Klein. Fouls it straight Man. back. Looked like he was on time for that yes, fastball. he was. Just enough underneath it. Pushes the count to two balls and two strikes. Can't thank Lenny enough for fixing the, uh, <laughs> fixing the camera in center field so that we got that good shot. And we got the, all the icons off the screen. Montour fires. Pop up to shallow center field. Cody Corrales is underneath it. He corrals it. Uh-huh. You like that? Like that dad pun. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 <laughs> Emoji eye roll right there on that pun. You've been practicing that at I home. I have been. <laughs> so pop up eight right there. It's going to bring up number 12, Gavin Kennedy, who is the right fielder. Hitting from the left side. So with two outs, runners on first and second. The Raiders are up 2 nothing. top half of the fourth inning. That's the Wolves up now, Jim. I'm sorry. The Wolves <laughs> are up. Wolves <laughs> are up. Raiders are hitting. Oh Wolves are up. My apologies. Montour misses outside. He's about to get a couple phone calls right mm -hmm. there. Text right there. Wait, wait, what? What? Checking what? his loyalty. <laughs> yes. That's all my apologies. <laughs> oh, he flinched. Oh, did he? Ah. he flinched. Yeah, he flinched. Coop's gonna go talk to him. Coop's gonna call people in here, and he's gonna like try to get people on the same page here because it, it's, on, this is twice. This is twice I think this inning that we've. We've had some issues right here. we got to work these things out because the little things like this now make a big difference, right? They do. Because now a ground ball to the left side of the field, and the fielders have to make the throw across the diamond. So if Marcus Newfield gets a ball at third base, he's got to make the throw as opposed to touching third base to end the inning. And those little bitty things make a big difference. We saw that happen, and we saw it play out in the win that the Wolves got against Pope John Paul where shortstop had to make the throw all the way across the diamond. He comes up short at first. Runs come in because of the error. And we saw it again in, uh, with Pearl River as well, too. So trying to get those things ironed out so we put our defense in a better position to succeed. Breaking pitch misses outside. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Now it kind of changes the way maybe we look at how we pitch. Yes. How we pitch him. Got open base. Kennedy's up. He's a left-handed hitter. Montour is a right-handed pitcher. You know, the matchup nice. is not necessarily favorable for the Wolves. You got a base open right here. You got two runners in scoring position. All things to consider when it boils down to actually throwing a pitch or calling a pitch. Fastball just misses on the outside part of the plate for Montour. That big smile right there by Montour kind of yeah. tells me that he thinks that maybe he disagrees with the home plate umpire. <laughs> John and I talked about that the last time he was on the mound. John introduces himself to the knuckles of Gavin Kennedy, and he fouls that one off on the fastball in. So 3-2, two, two outs. Runners will not be moving as there is no runner at first base. Break it pitch on a line drive to Brody Bootery, and he makes the stab, and the Raiders go down, stranding the two runners on the bases. So the score remains 2 nothing as we head to the bottom half of the fourth inning, and that was a huge play right there. Nice pitch, and uh, fortunately for us, Kennedy lines it to Bodie. Brody Bootery. I'm just going to say BB. <laughs> say BB, right? Not to be confused with Netanyahu, but BB over at second base. Because I want to screw his name up so many times. I want to say Bodie <laughs> Brutery and Brody, you know, it's just, it's a tongue twister. Yes, it, it is. Bob Uecker would have gotten it right, though. <laughs> he would have gotten it right. Maybe after the tenth time. Yeah. So a line out four right there for Knicks. Just a reminder, Jeff mentioned a while ago we got a double header here today. Yes. Two We're games. playing two. Playing for uh, I'm not sure what they call that. Um, 
The uh, Brown right. Cross? It's, it's, yeah, the, it's the cross. Some sort of LaSallian yeah. thing, yeah, maybe, it is. I guess. Okay. And who, um, if they split, they go to who scores the most runs. Okay. I, I told Mick, you know, that's, that's kind of good and kind of bad. Because... <laughs> That means you want to score a lot of runs. And oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what it boils down to, it, yeah. you might see some, uh, I don't want to call it running up the scoreboard, but, you know, if, right. if, if a game gets lopsided, yeah. then you're almost taking into consideration how many runs do I have to score to outscore my opponent, right? Well, the good thing, you don't, you don't get better uh, rating. Uh, you don't go up to this, uh, your, um, what is it? Power ratings. Power ratings by yeah. running up the score to get a. Across on him. So leading off for the Wolves in the bottom half of the fourth inning, Cameron Kayami, who takes a big hack right there on the first offering by Spadoni, swings through it for strike one. Cameron rolls over a ball. It's going to go just foul. Nick's over there with the backhand and scoops it up. We got some action down in the bullpen. We got a lefty. I need my binoculars. I can't really see who that is, though. Maybe 30-something, maybe 31 Will Pele, maybe. Cameron takes the fastball outside. So one ball, two strikes. Kayemi pops this one up. Should be an easy play for Spadoni coming off the mound. And the leadoff guy is retired. It's going to bring up Marcus Newfield, the third baseman, who had a single in his last at bat. Marcus playing a really good third base right now, man. Sarkissian with uh, 2D texted me the other day, said Newfield was up to 88 on the mound. Yeah. 88 on the mound. Wow. Uncommitted, but 88 on the mound. There's got to be somebody who wants that. I mean, this kid plays an incredible third base. He throws 88 on the mound. He hits well. Where's Takes that breaking pitch down in the zone, bringing the count to two balls and one strike. Where's Joe Sherman when you need him? Oh, I, think Nun <laughs> I think Nunez did reach out to them. Yeah? I think. Good. Because yeah, John David had a little visit with them this week, too. Oh, good. Good, good, good. I tell you, Joe. Joe. Fastball misses up and in, bringing the count to three balls and one strike. I remember when I was back at Jazz, that's how long I've known Joe. Joe's just such, does such a good job for those kids. Yeah. I mean, he, he brings a lot of them and put, um, puts them to the next level. Newfield with a hot shot, hard ground ball. It's going to get past Mikey, Mikey Ryan over at shortstop for a base hit. He's two for two for today. It's going to bring up the pitcher, John Montour, who got an RBI hit by pitch in his previous at bat. I'm not sure, Jeff. Were you alive when Rags was, uh, Coach Rags was alive? I think he passed I th I th after I graduated. Okay. Yeah, so early 2000s, I want to say. Montour with a nice swing, drives this one to center field, but should be an easy play for the center fielder, Evan Berg. So Montour is retired on the flyout. It's going to bring us back to the top half of the lineup with number one, Cody Corrales. Hit a sacrifice fly in his last at bat. Got himself an RBI. He's eating steak today. Mm. Little ribby. Glad you explained that to those pe some of the people out little there. Rib eye? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, really little ribeye? Oh, yeah, little ribeye. That's a baseball term been right doing there. Some, been doing some uh, practicing here on his. Uh, Terminology here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to fall into the Joe Buck category. It seems like everybody hates <laughs> Joe Buck. I don't know why. I love Joe Buck. I do too. And that's going to be controversial, but Corrales takes two fastballs kind of up and in, bringing the count to two balls, no strikes, two outs. Marcus Newfield leading off of first base. Easton LeBlanc in the on deck circle, trying to eye up Spadoni on the mound. Fastball misses away, but a snap throw out down to first base by Klein. It's a little late. Newfield dives back safely, so it's going to bring the count. Three balls, no strikes, two outs. Two nothing. Wolves in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Spadoni delivers, misses upstairs, fastball, and that's going to be a Very walk nice. on four pitches. 
So Corrales, it looks like Frankie Cazzo is going to go to the pen. Yep. It's going to bring up Easton LeBlanc, who he he's already got a walk. I don't know. I missed his second at bat, I guess. That's going to bring up number 51 on the mound. 51 is Brian Keller, the lefty. So that's going to close the book on Spadoni. Who, let's see, Spadoni went two and a third, gave up one hit, one walk, and one strikeout. Spadoni threw 34 pitches and 15 strikes. He faced 11 batters. Ooh, okay. So this is our third pitcher for Rummel now in yep. this, the first game. So. Yep, yep. So we go on the road next week to um, we go to we go to Live Oak on Tuesday, which should be a really good game. Yes, in Zachary. Yes. So. No, no, Live Oak. No, in Live Oak. Yeah, and then we play and then we play Zachary on I think Friday night. Yeah, there too. Over there, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, our Friday night was rained out, and uh, we will reschedule inclusion night, number one. And we had ladies' night on the books last night. I mean, we had Soul Spa sponsoring ladies' night. It was going to be a, a kind of a throwback to 2000s era where we had the female artists of the uh, 2000s that were going to fill the airwaves around the heap. Uh, unfortunately, we missed that. Missed half price drinks in the concession stand for all the ladies. And when I mean drinks, I mean Diet Coke and Coke and Sprite, so don't get don't get too carried away. That's on the rocks. All of us on the rocks. All, all, on the, all rocks. the rocks. Yeah. That's right. But uh, we're gonna come back to that sometime later in the later in the week. We got some gift cards to give out from Soul Spa to the first twenty five ladies who walk through the door. Obviously you probably want to live on the North Shore to utilize it because it's the one right there on twenty one. So we will revisit the ladies' night and inclusion night. We have inclusion nights, a big night for all the wolves. Core pack? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the core pack people. The core pack, yes, sir. Yeah. They were going to be involved as well, too. So Easton LeBlanc steps in the batter's box with two outs, runners on first and second. Corrales taking lead. Uh, I'm sorry, Braden Ferrizo running for John. God, no, running for. Uh, who's that? No, no, I'm sorry. Backtrack. Marcus Newfield, second base and Cody Corrales at first base. So Easton LeBlanc takes ball one as it misses up and away. I guess we need to start promoting, you know, in the, on I think on the 28th, they're bringing back in both state championship teams. Yes. Yeah, that's 1999 right. and yes. 2019. We're going to do a little honoring of yes. the uh, 1999 and 2019 state champions for the Wolves. Very excited We're about We're going to try to bring that. those guys back, or at least me as many of them yes. as we can. Yes. Um, no, Matthew Russo will not be able to be here as he right. is in uniform right now for the Southern Golden Miss. Eagles. Golden Eagles. LeBlanc that fouls this fall. one off. It's not going to be catchable, no. but it's mm -mm. Foul in foul yeah. territory in right field. Good effort there by Gennard and by Gavin Kennedy. So we'll reset. Play out the next pitch. Two balls, one strike, two outs. That Man. ought to be nice. A 25 year reunion and a five, the five, the two yeah. coming, coming together. Crazy you know? how they were 20 years apart. Oh, I mean, unbelievable. On the nose, right? Yes. Almost on the day. Really? That's yeah. crazy. So Keller comes set, fires. LeBlanc with a hot shot to Mikey, oh. Mikey Ryan over at Man. shortstop. And. It, and that's, that's why, why he's an LSU, LSU commit. <laughs> <laughs> nice and easy play to retire the side and end the threat right there for the Raiders. So coming up for the Raiders, I think, is going to be Mendieta, Frey, and back to the top with Ramirez. But, yeah, that was a, a nice and easy butter play right there. We're going to take a little break. I can take a bite of a hamburger, and we're going to come back.
Dominic Mendiata to lead off the top of the fifth. Okay, here we are in the top of the fifth. 2-0. So Mandietta takes a big hack on the first pitch that he sees. Fouls it off straight back. Generally, that means he's right on time, huh, Coach? Yes, yes. He's just a little underneath it for strike one. Montour and he breaks off. Change up. I mean, a curveball. Breaks off a breaking ball. Catches the meat of the strike zone right there, bringing the count to 0-2. Another breaking pitch. Good pitch Very right there. Good, good pitch. pitch. Just off the plate. But good job by Mendieta, who takes it. Well, Mendieta, I'd be swinging this time. It's close. Look at a fastball up right here. Nope. Another breaking pitch. Follows it straight back. That's the good thing about getting ahead. For all you young uh, viewers that are watching John Montour do his thing, man, you get 0-2. There's so many different things oh. that you can do. You're in the driver's seat. A little fastball right there. Strikes him out. Mendieta goes down swinging for his second strikeout of the game. But that is the key to pitching, right? It is. Get ahead. Like, you got to get ahead. You can do so many different things right there. Uh, Jeff, I, I, that's what I said. I just call it percentage pitching. Percentage. Yeah. Percentage. Get, that's going to bring up number 15, Brant Fry. I have been corrected. Who pops it straight up. Does Winchester have a play? No, it's going to hit the <laughs> roof of the third base grandstand. And Just scared. out of play. Scared half of the people in the stands over there. <laughs> yeah, I got a bunch of girls over there. Uh -huh. Got shook up a little bit. Ethan Fry. Thank you, Bully. At least somebody from Rumble is going to chime in and teach me how to say these guys' names. Fastball up. It's going into shallow tough. outfield. LeBlanc's trying to get there oh, with his back man. turned. Catches what it over play. his shoulder. That should go down as a trick play. I oh, tell you what, man. I went to the I went to Savannah Bananas at the Alex Box the other night. How Let me tell you it? something. Is that great? That was outstanding. It really was. They did a, such a good job. But Jeff, I mean, it's some like athletes out there. They, uh, that's a whole other topic. But let me tell you something. If you haven't seen the Savannah Bananas, it's oh. like WWE and baseball had a love <laughs> child, and they came together, and that's what came out, right? So it was a really entertaining event. They did such a good job, and. It, Listen, as a music fan and connoisseur, I really appreciated all the music. It was nonstop. Oh. Big hack right there by number seven, Ruben Ramirez. Takes a hack even in the count to one ball, one strike, two outs. But the Savannah Bananas oh. show was outstanding. And that's what you got to explain to people. Montour nice. misses outside for... For Very strike nice two. Location. Not too many people really fully understand the whole concept with the Savannah Bananas. Oh. It's a show, people. It is. It's a show. It's not, I mean, it money. is. It's a game. Don't get me wrong. They play a good game. There's a lot of talented guys that are out there. I mean, but we, the other teams not, too play. Hey, it's other teams similar to that, like no, Goofy, well, it's or is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the whole thing. It's so the same concept. It's like a league. Well, and that's not even well, a league. It's two teams, like the party animals. So it's just the same two. Yes. Okay, just the two of them. Okay, yes. I wasn't sure if there was maybe a handful or better or okay. And Lenny they, Montour they, catches the outside part of the plate for strike two, bringing the count to two balls, two strikes, two outs. Wolves up two nothing in the top half of the fifth inning. The, these guys can dance, they can sing, oh, they yeah. can do it all, <laughs> and they can play baseball. And they, yeah. Breaking pitch right there freezes John, Ramirez for the third out of the inning. So the Raiders go down in order, and the Wolves head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Scored. Wolves two, Raiders nothing. But yes, back to the Savannah Bananas. Man, the entertainment value is there. I mean, they sold out Alex, Alex Box Stadium. Yes, that, I was talking to somebody Thursday night. They had a group of like 25 of them. Yeah. They all would put in for tickets, and uh -huh. nobody got them. Yeah. They said you could. It was, I mean, yeah. we were fortunate enough to be able to secure them. I think we were way out in front of that. And uh, we wound up getting them the Lake Castle group over at St. Uh, oh, Lake Castle. I should say, <laughs> say St. Paul. The Lake Castle crew was able to secure the uh, the tickets early on, and uh, it was well worth the drive to get over there and watch it. They do a, such a good job of keeping you entertained, making it fun. I mean, I watch a guy catch a fly ball in center field, and he's doing a backflip as he catches it. Oh, it's, fun. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah this, is, this is not stuff they just do off the cuff. 
no, no, they no. Gotta practice this. Oh stuff. yeah, no, they got a they got a professional choreographer that Man. comes in and teaches the guys oh. the certain dances. Now look, it, it, it's almost like the baseball version of the six ten stompers, right? <laughs> yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Although, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. although I have to say, no offense to the six ten oh, stompers, I know. but these guys are a little bit more in shape. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, yeah. But yeah, no. Really but they still really? have they still have just as much fun. And they're doing a great job of entertaining the fans. Everything you find boring about baseball, they've looked at, they've assessed, yes. and they found a way to make it more interesting. So um, kudos to the guy who came up with it. Yes. Man. That's going to bring up Brennan Villa to the plate for the Wolves in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Brennan is one for two on the day with a base hit and strikeout. Due up for the Wolves is Villa, Winchester, and Roberts. But yeah, they that show is uh it's well worth it. It really was. Villa with a drive to center field should be easily handled. And it is. So one pitch, one out. Villa's retired. Gonna fly out to center. It's gonna bring up Cooper Winchester, who will get turned around given the fact that Keller is a left handed pitcher. Winchester 0 for 2 with a line drive out into right field and to fly out into right center field. First pitch breaking ball, takes it down for ball one. Good good take. Mm -hmm. Drive to the left, yep. to deep center field, played back. And that's going to be another fly out. But you so know, Jeff, you're looking at that. He's 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 getting close. He's getting closer and closer to that sweet spot. Yeah, he's finding Very, he's you know, finding a, a lot decent closer. rhythm. Yeah. So two up, two down for the Wolves. We are in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Scored two nothing Wolves. It's going to bring up Jude Roberts. Brian Keller on the mound for the Raiders. Their third pitcher of the day. Jude offers at the first pitch, fouls it straight down for strike one. Another same pitch, same swing, same result. You know, I'm looking in the left field round, lounge right now at the K zone, and I have to, I don't know whether or not that's five strikeouts for, <laughs> for us. For them, yeah, for us. Maybe three, two for or, them. Yeah, two for them and three for, <laughs> three right. for us. You know, we, ha we do have some Raider families that are over there. Yes. Uh, responsible for flipping over the K zone. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I have to say, and I know my Raider people are going to be a little disappointed when I say this, but I did not see any tailgating going on here. And as an alumnus, as a base hit to right right field. Oh, oh nice sliding play <laughs> right there by That's Gavin <laughs> Kennedy. <laughs> he could have played for the bananas right yeah, there. Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> that goes down as a trick play. That was a banana play. As Kennedy comes in and makes a sliding catch for some style <laughs> points right there, and that's going to retire the Wolves in order. But I do have to say, as my alma mater, I look out and I see a lot of people that I know. I am going to say, I think I'm disappointed in no tailgating. No tailgating outside the gates prior to the game. And we had a late start. No yes. game last night. Uh, they might who be do I, who between, do, who between games. I'm going to send an email. I'm going to send well, an Jeff. email to that. I'm going to be <laughs> and then to the customer service department over at the Alumni Association. And, you know, that is my alma mater. We're known for never losing a tailgate. <laughs> uh, today I can say we didn't win. We did not win. There's not a whole lot of people out there in the, all together. Yeah, we got a few people. There's a few students. There's a few a students out there, which made me think about Maybe the that. second game. They're coming in for the second Who game. Who knows? Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe the second game. Hope's actually out there in center, left center field, um, with her husband. Oh, okay. okay. That's Hope out there and her husband down back in the pickup truck. No, that's that's Dave Roberts and somebody else. I Hope saw was out there though. Oh, Hope maybe would, maybe Hope is out there. Hope was out there because when I went and fixed the camera, Hope yeah. was over there. I seen Dave a second ago. That is the, uh, just been and over out there. Yeah, yeah. Somebody out there. Either way, we do have some people in the outfield, Here's but I am throwing the gauntlet out to the Raider family. I'm disappointed. <laughs> All right, so heading to the top half of the sixth inning. 
John Montour in his sixth inning of work is going to face off with Mikey Ryan. Ryan's 0 for 2 on the day. Fastball misses downstairs for ball one. Got that lipstick back going. Got the hot pink. Big swing and a miss right there by Ryan. Montour blowing the fastball by him. Not really, but. Kid's got a hack there. Got it past I'm telling you. Yeah, he's, he's a good hitter, man. Good player all around. According to PG, number two player in the state. That's a, quite an accomplishment. Montour misses up and in, fastball. Bringing the count to two balls, one strike, nobody out. Breaking pitch, catches the outside corner right there, bringing the count two balls and two strikes. He got him, I think he got him last time on a uh, strikeout on a curveball. He did, he did. Let's see what he does here. Just don't throw him something he can hit over the plate. <laughs> that's, that's, that's smart right there. Breaking pitch misses down in the zone, three and two. Although you do have, now you, now you have Gavin Nix who's protecting Mikey Ryan. So you, you don't get better. Right. As you work your way down the lineup. So, break it, pitch. Oh, oh man. Just missed off the plate right there, but a really good take by Mikey Ryan. And he's going to draw a walk right there, bringing up the La Tech commit in the form of Gavin Nix. Bob was a little bit outside. Maybe. I can see how he catches. But I tell you what, from a, you know, you're doing a two strike approach, you're trying to protect the outside corner. You know, you got to really have a good eye for the outside part of the plate to be able to take that pitch. And John threw a good pitch there. Yeah. Fastball gets Nick's way out in front, and he pulls it almost, he takes out the on-deck batter in the, the Raider on-deck circle. So no balls, one strike. Ryan taking a lead over at first base. Montour delivers. Fastball catches the outside part of the plate right there. 0-2. Don't need to throw him anything good, John Montour. Gets him to fly. Nice. Got it. Looks like, yeah, Jude Roberts had him played perfectly. It was fading foul. Nix goes down for the first out of the inning, so... Really good positioning right there by Jude Roberts and, and a really good pitch by right there by John Montour. Slowing, Very good pitch. Slowing him down, forcing him to get out in front on the outside part of the plate where it turns into a weaker fly ball, something easier for the outfield to handle. So with one out with a runner on first base, that's going to bring up the center fielder, Evan Berg. Hacks at the first pitch, pops it straight up. Is it going to stay in play? No, it goes just on the other side of the mossy net that we have over there. And uh, that's going to go foul. Yeah, I think that's some kind of endangered species, moss or something, yeah. so we can't do nothing it's about it. It's something that the Louisiana State Agricultural <coughs> Association needs to look at. Winchester fires down to second oh, base him. and hoses got Mikey him. Ryan, trying to take second base right there. So Winchester drops a dime at second oh. base and gets the LSU commit for the second out of the inning. So good shot right oh, there man. by Coop. All around, that was really good because yep. – Ryan's fast. It had to be a quick delivery by Montour at first. And flawless exchange. Oh, that's going to be. That's going to be another over the shoulder almost grab by Easton LeBlanc. But it is going to drop in for a base hit by Evan Berg. So with two outs, Berg winds up reaching on the base hit that just falls in off the glove of Easton LeBlanc. I'm not giving him an error on that. There's no. No, 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 no. That is not no. nowhere near expected to make the play. It's going to bring up number 44, Gennard. Aiden takes the first pitch for a ball. It's a breaking pitch up and away. Fastball misses downstairs. Two and getting up. up on that ball, John, right there, man. A little bit. He's actually yeah. feeling pretty good. Looks like it anyway. Yeah, strong. 
Montour delivers, fires, gets Gennard swinging through the fastball. Right now, Montour through five and two thirds has thrown 90 pitches and 49 strikes. So a little bit better than, a little bit better than uh, almost 50% right. strikes. Fastball popped up, shallow left center field, and an easy play for Jude Roberts who nestles underneath it, and the Raiders are retired in the bottom, top half of the sixth inning. So we're heading to the bottom. Let's see, what did Knicks do? Knicks flew out to another base hit. I sure would feel good if we out. bring in a run, one or two runs right here. Yeah, we need some uh, insurance runs. Uh, this, yeah. this, I mean, I don't care where we are in the Raider lineup, they've got firepower. And yeah. if you keep this game within reach, they're going to be able to come back. And after all, between the two games, um, really what you're playing for is runs, right, Coach? Right. Yeah, I mean, wins and runs, don't get me wrong. But uh, we have some, some new tradition that started last year in this series where they give, uh, we still don't know what, what the name of the award is. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out by game two. But uh, the Raiders swept the series, I mean, the uh, Wolves swept the series last year and wound up holding on to the award that, it's a LaSallean award. It's named after Brother Alfred Baltz. <sighs> okay, yeah, him. They got, and it. They got it over there at the um, concession stand. There's a yeah, I saw over it. there, yes. Okay. So that's kind of what we're playing for today. And since we don't, since we lost the game last night, there's no three-game series. The way that it works is, if we wind up splitting the doubleheader today, it's whoever scores the most runs winds up taking home the trophy. Gotcha. So that's kind of what we're up against. Um, so while you are playing for a win and a loss, you're also playing for trying to score the most runs. So the bottom half of the six comes around, and we're going to have Boudery, Kayemi, and Newfield stepping into the batter's box. Brody Boudery is 0 for 1 right now with a hit by pitch. Got hit in his first at bat. Brian Keller on the mound right now for the Raiders. The southpaw gets what he likes and delivers the first pitch. Misses outside. Ball one. For all those... Uh St. Paul's fans out there that knew Brother Alfred, he was a very beloved brother. Okay. I mean, uh, I think he lived 98. He had a, bro uh, he had a brother, too. Hard line oh. drive over there to All Gavin right. Nix by Brody Bootery. And Nix, with the nice stab, retires BB. Definitely double right there. Yeah, that was really hard hit. Nice play right there by Gavin Nix over there in the hot corner. It's going to bring up Cameron Kayemi, number six, the first baseman. Cameron is, uh, he is 0 for 1, popped out to the pitcher in his last at bat and walked in his first at bat. Offers kind of halfway at yeah. a ball that's down in the zone. Brings the count, O ball, one strike. 2 nothing Wolves, bottom half of the sixth inning. Game one. Now, the Christian brothers, they, this is a retirement <coughs> home for uh, a number of the brothers. Right, yes. And they have, so. they have a house over here. Well, that bur it, it, that, it burned down. <coughs> oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. it burned down. Okay, okay, okay. So, 0-2 to Kaiemi. Fastball misses just surprised, off the plate right there. I was surprised Brother Rich isn't here today because he was the principal at Rummel before I was at Rummel, and he's yes. a brother here. And he lives right over here. <clears throat> they got a house on he's, Janky. Okay, gotcha. Because he came to a couple of games last year and did the prayers. Right. Ooh, swing and a miss right there by Kayami. <clears throat> Followed it off, but good job by Klein for handling it, and that's going to retire Kayami for the second out of the inning. It's going to bring out Marcus Newfield, who's two for two on the day with two base hits. I keep forgetting that you're also part of the, you know, yeah. the Raider Nation. <laughs> also, being, bro being Rumble, Rumble Boys, uh, Brother John, you know, he just passed yep. away recently. Yep. Yes, he did. And um, him and Brother Richard were together at Rumble. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Newfield with a hit ball, ball hit up the middle to the backhand of the second baseman. <clears throat> That's a tough one. Brent Fry. It had a little awkward spin yes. on it. It winds up carrying, caroming and gets into center field. I'm going to say it's a base hit. I would go definitely base yeah. hit. I'm going to say it's a base hit. This is a tough play to make right there, going to your backhand. Backhand. So, Newfield with a 3-for-3 three three day today, bringing up the pitcher, John Montour, who 
apparently is going to go back out for the top half of the seventh, given the fact that he's hitting for himself here in the bottom half of the sixth. Keller delivers. Fastball misses up and in for ball one. So with two outs, Marcus Newfield leads off of first base. Montour in the batter's box. Corrales waits patiently in the on-deck circle. Montour with a cue ball shot into the uh, visiting on-deck circle. Way out in front of that one. Yeah, with a little history there. You, when you have a De La Salle and you have a Rummel and you have St. Paul's, all those brothers are going to be, you know, closely connected. And they've yes. all probably been in and that, <clears throat> either one of the three schools. Sure. And they're all the, their time at St. Paul's and Rummel. And Montour grounds the ball to Gavin Nix over there at third base, easily handled and fired across the diamond, and that's going to retire the side. So the Wolves go away empty-handed as we go to the top half of the seventh inning. The score is 2-0 Wolves. And the Wolves are three outs away from from the victory if they can secure three outs before the Raiders get two runs. Now, what's, what's very positive in the Wolves' favorite right here now is um, that 2 nothing lead means that if they get a guy on first, they can't, they're probably not going to sacrifice bunt guy to second I would and lose not. an out. I would think you gotcha. would not. So that's a positive. Right. So Rumble's going to have, they're going to have to hit their way to either get tied or get the lead. Yes. So that's the one thing going into the, uh, the, the bottom of the seventh or the top of the seventh, wherever you're at. You know, if, you got, if you're down by two, that, that bunt just does not play an important role. And do up for the Raiders, you have Klein, Kennedy, and Mendieta, as long as there's no pinch hitters. Right. It's the way that it's looking like. Montour is going to go out for the top half of the seventh inning. He's hopefully going to close this thing out. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if at any given moment, any sign of trouble or fatigue, we wind up pulling in Easton LeBlanc from shortstop, who, for all intents and purposes, has really kind of been the closer for the Wolves in these types of situations. Or at least we've seen a pattern of that over the last several games. <clears throat> yeah, going back to the brothers. So, Brother Rich was up in the press box with us, and we're talking. And me and another guy, um, Randy, were up there last year talking about living in Bucktown and Metairie and stuff. Like, what do y'all know about Metairie? Where'd y'all go to grammar school? We're like St. Louis King of France. And that's where Brother Rich's brother, Al Kovach, was our principal. Hmm. And he used to have the paddle. <laughs> yes, and he goes, yeah. Oh, I done messed it up, Jeff. And he was like, oh, yeah, I did not like my brother having that. Hit that again. Hit this one again. This one again. Oh, no, no that's the, I messed it up. Low fastball. Uh -oh. One and oh. That's that same one we had on there earlier. Oh, you dirty dog. I got it. I got it, Jeff. Okay. Oh, no, so no, fastball no, no. gets popped up. Should be an easy play for BB over at second base. And Gavin Klein is retired for the first out of the inning. So pop up to pop up four. It's going to bring up number 12, the right fielder, Gavin Kennedy, who made a really nice play in center, uh, right field earlier. Yes. Rehearsing for the banana. <laughs> yeah, right? Fastball misses just outside. John ball has one. been all around the strike zone the whole game. Yeah, he made he has. all around the strike zone. He has. Foul ball, straight back. Gathered up by the future head coach of the Wolves, Christian Gibby. Ground ball, hard shot to Kayemi, who goes to a knee and bottles it up for the second out of the inning, and Kennedy is retired on the ground ball. Yeah, Coach Gibby, who is also a, a member of the uh, 99 state championship team. That's right. That is right, yes. I know a number of guys who are on that team. So Montour staring down Dominic Mendieta who takes a fastball down in the zone for strike one. I'm sorry, ball one, ball one, excuse me. Out in front, if we can get the play, somebody get there, and he's out. And he got it. He's out, and the game is over. So good job by Cameron Kayemi to secure the ball. It had some really awkward spin, 
And that is going to do it for game one as the, the Wolves wind up taking this one 2 nothing against the Raiders. And a, another outstanding yes. performance by John Montour who gets the complete game shutout. And the, Ra uh, the Wolves wind up taking the first game of the doubleheader away from the Raiders. I, I tell you, I can't say enough about John Montour. I mean, for his first year of ex varsity experience, he has taken the mound on every, every opportunity time. that he has, and he's like a 10-year seasoned vet on the mound. He is. He is executing his pitches. This is not an easy lineup. Oh, no. Any one of those guys has the ability to leave the ballpark yeah. at any given moment, not to mention the commits with uh, Ryan and, and Nix. And... He just goes out there and does his thing, and he winds up getting these guys out. He, he handled all of them. Yeah. I mean, he's just doing his thing out there. And, you know, it's, it's fun to watch. The reason why it's fun to watch, he's not a William Schmidt from Catholic who's got a 98-mile-per-hour fastball and a 3,000 spin rate breaking wow. pitch. He goes out there, and he has what he has, and he's getting guys out, and he's executing. This is a very difficult Rummel lineup, and he hold them to no runs. No <laughs> runs. So a very another impressive outing right now yes. by uh, John Montour. Kudos to him. He helps his own cause. He, uh, he gets hit by a fastball in his first at-bat, which ultimately winds up giving them enough runs for him to get the win. Uh, we, we added an insurance run after that, and uh, the, the Wolves wound up taking the first game of the doubleheader away from the Raiders. My alma mater, I know it hurts, well, let, but let, in the same <laughs> sense. Let, let's talk about that Wolves. now. That's, that's a little bit about that is um, they, they beat Brother Martin on Wednesday. Come the Raiders back. did. Uh, no, we did. Oh, we did. Okay, well, we, we played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We beat Brother Martin on Wednesday. That was Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. Tuesday yeah. Okay. I was and then come back off right and beat these guys today. Right. What a confidence booster. That yeah. is really – and, and got another big game today right here. Then next week, two good games, and yes. then we're getting ready for district. Exactly. So we're really playing quality baseball right now. I will say this. We didn't light up the scoreboard no. with hits or runs and this, that, and the other, but you got enough runs. You executed when it was necessary yes. to give you the run support that you needed, and you have a quality outing on the mound by John Montour and excellent defense. That's what you need when you're going to keep the score at a minimum and go against a very good Rummel team. And, uh, you know, that's that's what you need to have happen. I'm very satisfied with the way we played today. You're not always going to hit the ball around the ballpark. That's right. you got three different pitchers for Rummel out on the mound. It's hard to kind of go up there every single at-bat facing a new guy, right? There's tendencies that you see in your first at-bat that maybe you think, okay, next time around I might have an opportunity to make right. an adjustment off of that. Well, when it's a whole new pitcher... You don't have to actually have that opportunity to take that same right. adjustment that you just thought about and bring it to the plate because you got a whole new guy. So not an easy task right there, no. but the Wolves find a way to get it done. Now, this is what is exciting for me now. Uh, Fariso. He started Frizo. 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 I, right. I get I'm like you okay. the double B's. Yeah, the here. BBs, right. Um, I get it. It's okay. I'm excited about seeing him throw today. You know? Yeah. Yeah, he's and I, I think he he'll be, he will definitely be on a pitch count. Is he on game two? Uh huh. Oh he is? Yeah. Okay, I, good. I'm I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm good. pretty sure. Yeah. Good. Um because this would be the time he went out the other day. I think he threw a little on Tuesday. Okay. And then he'll throw today. Then he'll get some more next week, then he'll be yes. ready for district. Right. True. So we'll be we'll be at full strength, I think, by the district. Yes, hopefully so. We're keeping our fingers crossed. We did have two tough games, in the form of, uh, well, not three tough games in a row. When you consider the second half of this day, which is another game against the Raiders. Yes. And then you got Live Oak on Tuesday, and you got Zachary on Friday, and then we started on Monday with uh, Slidell. Yep, so that's right. Um, it would be nice to be able to kind of feel a momentum or a trend going in Absolutely. a positive direction with uh, the next few days. Um, but, yeah, so, all right, we're going to take a little break. We're going to keep the stream going. Um, but uh, we're going to be back in about probably 20, 30 minutes with game two. Uh, we'll have the starting lineups for both teams here shortly. But uh, 
for the time being. That wraps things up for game one. We'll be back for game two shortly.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for game two. St. Paul's Wolves taking on the Rummel Raiders. And this game is a little bit, a little bit special, it hits close to home. We are uh, dedicating this game to one of the baseball moms who has volunteered her time for many a years over at St. Paul's. Miss Hope Kayami, who is battling breast cancer. And uh, Hope has, for years, sacrificed her free time to be a part of the Home Run Club, has had two sons come through the system, Trent Kayami, who graduated two years ago, and now first baseman Cameron Kayami. And Hope is uh, going to be having surgery this week. So we ask that you please keep Hope in your prayers. And uh, the boys have a little tribute to Hope. And uh, they have the little stickers on the back of their head uh, that say Faith, Hope, Love, and St. Paul's Baseball. Hope has been a, a, a vital part of the behind the scenes activities that go beyond uh, what happens on the field to help make this program very successful. And as a token of our appreciation, we want to say thank you to Hope and we wish her the best as she continues to battle through this monster of a disease and uh, hopefully she will come out of it on top and our prayers and thoughts are with her. So this game will be dedicated to Hope. With that being said, we will announce the starting lineups for the, the two teams today. Not very different from game one, few substitutions. So leading off for the Raiders will be number seven, Ruben Ramirez, who will be in left field. Hitting second, the LSU commit, number two, Mikey Ryan, playing shortstop. Hitting third, the number six, the La Tech commit, Gavin Nix, playing third base. Hitting fourth, Evan Berg at, at center field. And we'll get to the rest of the lineup in a second as Ruben Ramirez steps into the batter's box. On the hill today for the Wolves will be Braden Ferizo, who misses in with a fastball ah. for ball one. Lead off batter. Jumps out of the way of a fastball. Come on. Yeah, yeah you got to take those. Yes, indeed. <laughs> this is your draft, isn't it? Uh, we have an extra one up here, Coach. We, this is an extra one. Oh, great. This so is you're, an you're extra <laughs> one. Yep. Parizo gets what he likes and delivers. Swings through the fastball right there, evening the count to one ball and one strike. It's a great sign seeing him come back out now. Oh, yes. yes. Fastball fouled off for strike two. Yeah, Braden has been on the shelf. He did have two innings of of performance against Brother Martin the other day. Gave yes. up uh, one or two hits, I think. But uh, nonetheless, first outing back after an injury was pretty positive. Misses downstairs with yeah. that fastball, evening the count to two balls and two strikes. Somehow I missed those two innings. I don't remember what happened. He uh, he came in after Cooper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I was late. <laughs> Swung through it for strike three, and the leadoff hitter, Ruben Ramirez, goes down with the strikeout. As the LSU commit, Mikey Ryan steps into the batter's box. When you get some fellow, fellow Raiders out there to um, flip them caissons back out there for us yeah. in the outfield. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they want we'll Braden Ferizzo them. to catch yeah. up to those, you know, which would not be a bad thing. So Yeah, we're okay with that, too. Ferizzo, the southern, uh, southeastern Louisiana commit, facing off against Mikey Ryan. Throws the fastball, catches the inside part of the plate for strike one. Wolves took game one of this two-game set. Fastball up and in right there for ball one. I really like that pitch only because first inning, I'm all about being able to establish the fastball on the inside part yes, of the plate indeed. Right there. Let's see how he answers. So a high pop-up, shallow center field. Corrales looks like he's underneath it, nice and easy. Corrals it. <laughs> I'm going to go wear that out. I'm going to wear that out right there. So fly ball out, and uh, Mikey Ryan is retired. The lineup doesn't get any easier as Gavin Nix, the La Tech commit, steps into the batter's box. So two up, two down. Top half of the first inning, game two. Braden Ferizo on the mound right now for the Wolves. 
fires. Fastball fouled off for strike one. So going around the horn right here, we got Cooper Winchester behind the plate, Marcus Newfield at third, Easton LeBlanc still at short, BB Brody Boudery at second, Cameron Kayami at first. Fastball misses upstairs, evening the count to one ball and one strike, two outs. In left field, we still have Jude Roberts. Played a really good left field in that last game. Center field, we have Cody Corrales, and in right field, we have James Hardwick. Line drive to Cody Corrales in center field. It is going to get down for a base hit. Falls right in front of him, which, uh, you know, two outs, maybe you take a chance, but in retrospect, I would much rather see him being at first base right there. I don't think Cody had a play on it. It would have... It would have been a valiant effort to try to dive and Absolutely. catch that ball. But keeping it in front, I think, is is the most important thing right now, especially in the first inning. So that's going to bring up number nine, Evan Berg, center fielder. Fastball misses in for ball one. Another fastball inside part of the plate. Just off, bringing the count to two balls and no strikes. Nix with a fairly conservative leave over there. Fastball in, snap throw to you first. Got him. Oh, oh, they got him in a rundown. They got Nix in a rundown. Keep down. going, keep going, right there. Got him. And Nix is tagged yep. out for the old two, three, six, three out. <laughs> <laughs> now that that is how you do a rundown. Yes, everything's coming back toward the base. They make a mistake. They make it at first base. Correct. Not at down there. Done perfect. Yes, you want it, Once you have the guy. Once you have the base runner committing to second base, give it up. Yes. Have him run him back to first base, just like they did, and just like that, we're out of the inning right there. So, uh, snap throw by Coop. In all actuality. The Raiders go down in order, one, two, and three, kind of unconventionally. Right. But uh, we're going to head to the bottom half of the first inning. Wolves coming to bat. We'll be right back. In and out urgent care. Serving our community with rapid COVID testing, flu shots, DOT CDL physicals, treatment for allergies, rashes, cuts, cough, and cold, and state-of-the-art on-site x-ray. Visit any of our four locations seven days a week or bring the mobile care van to your business and test up to 300 people daily. Schedule your appointment online at in and out in and out Urgent Care and Occupational Medicine. Feel better, faster. In and out urgent care. Serving our community with rapid COVID testing, flu shots, DOT CDL physicals, treatment for allergies, rashes, cuts, cough, and cold, and state of the art on site x ray. Visit any of our four locations seven days a week or bring the mobile care van to your business and test up to 300 people daily. Schedule your appointment online at in and out urgent care.com. In and out urgent care and occupational medicine. Feel better, faster. Here we go, bottom half of the first inning. Cody Corral is stepping into the batter's box for the Wolves. On the mound right now for the Raiders is Avery Williams. Cody oh, with a deep drive swung. ball to center field, but they're playing him way back, so it's going to be an easy fly out. Oh, man. I can say that for the Raiders. They are they are playing pretty deep in yes. the outfield. Um Based off of the positioning in last game, we had several hard hit balls to the outfield that were really just kind of can of corns for the outfield because they are playing pretty deep. You gotta work on your Texas League approach. So the fastball by Williams catches the outside part of the plate against number three, the shortstop Easton LeBlanc for strike one.
LeBlanc drives this one to left field. It's going to fall for a base hit. And now, the Wolves have something brewing right here in the bottom half of the first inning as Brennan Villa, the designated hitter, steps into the batter's box. You know, for the young hitters out there, he had he had him off balance just a little bit, but he kept his hands back. Mm. He kept his hands back and just drove it to left field. That was a very good at bat. Is the catcher for uh, Rumble going anywhere? Um... You know him, Blum. Uh, I don't believe so. He's no, this is, this is a oh, this is a different okay. catcher. This is a different catcher from the first game. Klein was the the catcher in the first game, and then uh, was Klein going anywhere? Yes. Uh, no, I, to my knowledge, I'd no. say his pop time was really good. Yeah, and then we got Brogan Blum behind the plate right okay. now. Williams fires, misses upstairs for a ball, evening the count to one ball and one strike. Williams likes what he sees, comes set, delivers. High chopper to second base. It's going to pull Frey in, who makes the play. LeBlanc advances to second, and then Brendan Villa is retired on the fielder's choice. It's going to bring up number nine, catcher Cooper Winchester. So with a runner on second base and two outs, the lefty steps into the batter's box facing Williams. Line out, fly out, fly out to the outfield in game one. Oh, it chases oh. a pitch down in the zone. Little comebacker to the pitcher and that's gonna retire Winchester. Not a very quality pitch to swing at, so. No, he knew he'll, 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 he'll be mad at himself on that one. Yeah, he's getting a little over aggressive yeah. on that pitch. It's too low. He needs a, he, he values the low pitch in the zone, but that's too low. You're not going to do anything yeah. with Yeah, and there that. was not a lot of velocity on that ball either. No. Got, no, just bad at bat. Can't swing at that first pitch. So we head to the top half of the second inning. Knotted up 0-0. Zero, zero. For the Raiders, Evan Berg is still going to be in the batter's box as he was in the batter's box when Gavin Nix got picked off at first base. So it'll be Berg, Gennard, and Kennedy. I remember back in the day when I used to play a couple of coaches, we'd play this three-game series like this. Uh -huh. And um, they'd ask me, Rick, you think maybe um, the second game we can be home team? <laughs> I'd say, absolutely. Yeah, did, did you bring money for the umpires? Yeah, right. And they go, what? Yeah, exactly. Oh, you, aren't you going to pay the $100 for the umpires? They go, well, no. I said, mm. Then forget it. No, you're not home team? Yeah. Home I team would have done it anyway. Right. I don't even know why they would even ask oh, that. Oh, it, it's, you, Jeff, you wouldn't believe it. There were numerous. All right. You remember Billy Fitzgerald? The name from sounds Newman? familiar. He was from Newman. He was an outstanding athlete at, at Newman. We played a scrimmage game against him one time here, and all his catches were hurt, and he wanted to know if I'd let him catch. <laughs> <laughs> Billy? It's almost like, man, if you could handle it, might as well go ahead. <laughs> oh, he could have handled it, trust me. All right, so leading off in the top half of the second inning, we got Evan Berg back in the batter's box. Braden Ferrizo delivers. Fastball misses upstairs mm. off the glove of Winchester for ball one. Mm -mm. Oh, shit, sorry. Hmm. Easy, Lenny. I didn't say anything. Easy. <laughs> Family show. Is our camera jacked up again? It moved a little bit, it looks like. So a hard line drive into deep left center field. You're not going to catch this one. So it looks hey, like what? Berg is going to win. I might have a play at second. And wow. no, stand up double for Berg leading off the second inning. So the Raiders trying to open up the top half of the second frame with some action. That double falls in in the left center field gap. 
That's going to bring up number 44, Aiden Gennard, who's the son of Ryan Gennard, who's actually going to be joining us in the third inning to give us a little color commentary on the Raiders. Frito, Frito, Frizo fires ball one. <laughs> there you go now. I'm working. Been, hanging, oh been my hanging around God. you too long. Dummy. <laughs> Fastball misses upstairs. 2 0. Easton LeBlanc wants to have an opportunity to kind of go over some signs right there with Braden Ferrizo. Talk about when and when not to throw down to second base. Big swing right there by Gennard. No contact though as Ferrizo fires the fastball in there for a two ball and one strike count. Runner on second base, nobody out. He's probably looking to try to hit something to the right side to get him over. Execute a little situational hitting right there. That's a big hack though. Doesn't look like there's much intent to try to drive the ball the other way. So two balls and two strikes. Hard line drive, hits the bag at third base. That's gonna be extra base hits maybe. No, he's gonna hold up at first, but it does plate the run. And the Raiders jump out on top on the RBI single by Aiden Gennard. So the Raiders are in, in, in order, stand up double and a base hit down the right field line. And they plate the first run of the day for the Raiders. This is game two. Fastball to Gavin Kennedy, misses down and away. Kennedy is the designated hitter for today, hitting for Avery Williams, who is on the mound. Carrizo comes set and fires. Catches the outside part of the plate for strike one. Bringing the count to one ball and one strike. No outs. Top half of the first, second inning. Sorry. Change up. Gets, oh, nice pitch. Gets Kennedy to pop it up to shortstop. Should be an easy play for Easton LeBlanc. And it is. It's going to bring up the catcher, Brogan Blum. Runner on first base, one out. Blum takes the fastball nice. on the outside part of the plate for strike one. Good job by Ferrizo trying to get ahead. Another fastball, same location, catches the outside like part that. for strike two. So Ferrizo attacking the strike zone, getting the count to no balls and two strikes. Got plenty of options right now. Can go up top, can go down low. Chooses to go up top. It's a ground ball back to Ferrizo. Should be a sick one. Oh, oh and a mishandle. Now, bad throw right there by Easton LeBlanc. Has Kaimi trying to reach in the dirt for the throw. So we squander the opportunity to turn the uh, 1 6 3 double play. Keeps the inning alive. It's going to be a pinch runner for the Raiders. Throw over to second base. Short hops the first baseman. So that's twice we've seen two nonchalant throws from the Raiders that have resulted in errors. And now there's a runner in scoring position with two outs. So Wolves have got to clean it up if they're going to wind up taking game two because you cannot give more outs to a very good team than they actually need. 
Fastball just misses off the outside part of the plate for one ball and no strikes. So it's going to bring up Dominic Mendieta. Pops it up nice. in the infield. Ferrizo looks like he's underneath it. Could very easily handle it. Makes the catch and the Raiders are retired, but not before they played a run. Pushing the score to one nothing in favor of the Raiders. So we're gonna take a little bit of a break and we're, we're gonna come right back as we try to adjust the center field camera. So leading off of the Wolves in the bottom half of the second inning, we got Jude Roberts, left fielder, stepping into the batter's box. Jude with a base. Oh! Nice play by Mikey Ryan, stealing a base hit from Jude Roberts. Purple and goal. Yeah. <laughs> He's made some, some nice plays today between game one and game two. And... And that's going to retire Jude Roberts there. So you're going to see our center field camera kind of get adjusted here in a second. I think it's facing a little bit too far down. Brody Bootery with a big hack. I am officially renaming Brody Bootery to Brodery. <laughs> so when you hear me yell Brodery, it's because I get tongue twisted saying the first and second name. And he will now be known with one name, and it is Brodery. So Brodery is stepping into the batter's box in a 1-1 count. Williams is there to fire the first next pitch, breaking pitch, and Brodery takes it for strike two. So Jude with a line out to six. I'm gonna do my best to keep up with changing the camera from time to time. That button seems to work. All right. See Lenny pop up over the center field wall in a second. So Brodery fouls that one back. Oh, there we go. You can see the fence shaking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa. A little too high, bro. Oh, yeah. All right, a little bit lower, a little bit lower. Perfect. Stay there, Lenny. Although it keeps slipping. It's slipping. It's slipping. Uh, Brodery chases that ball down in the dirt for out number two. So two up, two down. It's going to bring up number seven, Marcus Newfield. There you go. Keep it right there, Lenny. Oh, oh, yes. Where's he at, Jeff? I don't see him. <laughs> He's hiding behind. Oh, oh. Yeah. Actually, great job, Lenny. So Marcus Newfield takes a break and pitch down in the zone. Ball one. A little, little bit more chatter coming out of the Raider dugout. So oh, Newfield dug pops this one up. Tough. It's going to be a tough play. And the second baseman, Fry, Good effort. doesn't Good have effort. the ability to get there in time. Falls in foul territory, and, and Newfield is going to reset. You get to take a, take a look at the guy behind the plate, the umpire. 
His nickname is Tiger Woods. You got to look at him. He, oh, really? Oh my goodness. He looks like Tiger. Yeah, Woods. Oh my gosh! All through the years. <laughs> yeah. It'd say Ti- who you got today? You got Tiger today. I Tiger like. Woods. I'm a dish. Like if you see it right here, he probably wishes he had his money too. <laughs> so one ball, one strike to Marcus Newfield. Avery Williams on the bump right now for the Raiders. Newfield takes that breaking pitch down in the dirt, pushing to count the two balls and one strike. Put the ball there. Oh, uh, fastball him. gets in on the hands. It's going to be popped up to Mikey Ryan over at shortstop, who easily handles it. And the Wolves go down in order. So one, two, three go the Wolves, and we head to the top half of the third inning. Raiders on top for this one, one nothing, and we'll be right back. All right, so we're here in the bottom half of the second inning. Braden Ferrizo on the mound right now. The second baseman. Oh, oh, okay, almost over the head of, I'm sorry, that was uh, number 10, Dominic Mendieta. No, 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 I'm sorry. That was number 15, Brant Fry, who lines out to right field. Shoot, what did Mendieta do to end the inning? I forgot. Trying to follow around. Yeah, James kind of went up on that one a little bit too fast. Yeah. In right field. So that's going to bring up the top of the lineup with a check swing that line is. drive to Brodery over at second base. That'll help your pitch count right there. Ruben Ramirez right there with a little soft liner to four for the second out of the inning. So two pitches, two outs. Can almost guarantee, well, I don't know if Mikey Ryan's going to take a pitch. I mean, Frizo might groove a fastball in there, which he does. <laughs> and Mikey takes a huge hack and follows it straight back for strike one. So the Raiders coming out swinging in the top half of the third inning. They saw three pitches and three hacks. Frizo nice sneaks pitch. a slider in there for nice. 0 2. Boy, it'd be really nice to be able to retire him on a yes. fastball up. Fastball oh, up. The man. ball is driven into deep right center field. Man, I'm gonna get that one. Hardwick is going back. He's not going to make the play. This is going to fall either. in. Looks like there's going to be a stand-up triple for Mikey Ryan. <laughs> and so the Raiders. Too good of a pitch. Yeah, it was too good too of a good. Pi too o good two. of a pitch. O two. We got to get that ball a little bit more. Especially elevated. on a kid like that right there. Right. So Ryan stands up with the triple. And that's going to bring up Gavin Nix with two outs. So two outs, runner on third base. A little discussion by the umpires. I'm not sure what was Yeah, well, the problem there. is is that Ryan took his helmet off. Oh, okay. And I think that's kind of a borderline scenario out. where he could yeah. be called out. And So a line drive to Brodery. It just gets past the glove. 
of Brodery at second base. Wow. And that's going to play to run. So Gavin Nix, the La Tech commit, scorches that line drive. So the Raiders go up 2-0. And they are thriving off of the energy that is being produced right now. With the two out singles. It's going to bring up, not only is it going to bring up Evan Berg. That dog, sit on this side for me. That's my computer guy. Yeah, I'll come sit back next to you in a second. Lola, sit right here and put this one on. I'll let you sit next to Jeff. Ryan, Rick Malden, Rick Malden, Ryan Gennard. That's me. So we're being joined in the booth right now by my former <laughs> teammate and state champion, co state championship winner, Ryan Gennard, whose son, Aiden Gennard, is uh, in the lineup right now for the Raiders. Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing well, Jeff. Well, put that microphone a little closer to you. you. Yeah. You know, you're a professional. A little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, get it right up there, right on them lips. You're a professional at this now. <laughs> no, no, I've just screwed up enough to figure that out. And Bird goes down swinging, but not before the Raiders plate another run and push the score to two to nothing. So, Ryan, give us a little inside on how the Raiders' season has been going so far. Well, it's kind of been a roller coaster ride. The bats are either there or they not. Um, well, it we, definitely looks like they're there for game two. Yeah, uh, as you saw, game one, we hit, we've been hitting a lot of fly balls. But, I mean, it's just adjustments they got to make. Yep. If we can get top to bottom to start swinging and mesh together, I mean, they're going to be a tough, really tough team to beat. The pitching staff I'm really impressed with. Uh, the other night, you had Giancarlo get up there. He dealed through a no-header against yeah. Curtis. Oh, wow, yes. I saw that, yep. Yep, and then uh, Ryan Claver, he came for the second game. and uh, So y'all really played a doubleheader against Curtis? We had to play two games. It was uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Oh, okay, okay. So y'all went back-to-back yep, nights. went back-to-back. -back. Okay. And, uh, they did very well. Uh, look, it was good games, just kind of like this game, the first game. Not that many hits. I believe maybe – Four. Okay. Each game. Um, it, look, the, the team, Rumble's going to be good there. You know, they they just got a lot of kids that's got to mess together, just like you guys. I mean, y'all pitchers, that kid that threw the first game was Montour. great. Montour. So leading off in the bottom half of the third inning for the Wolves is going to be first baseman uh, Cameron Kayami. But, yeah, John Montour, the kid who pitched for us in the first game, I mean – what you saw today is what he's been doing all season long. And oddly enough, as a senior, Kiami fouls this ball off down the right field line. It's going to get out of the field of play. What you've seen today, this is his first, first varsity year where he's got any action, oddly enough. And every time he steps on the mound, he's just in attack mode. And he's mixing up his pitches. He's getting the job done. Kayemi with a bait, with a line drive to left field, and it's going to be handled easily by the left fielder Ruben Ramirez, and that's going to retire Kayemi. That's going to bring up the pitcher, number two, Braden Farizo. But uh, yeah, Montour has been he's been pitching like that all season. He did well. He had uh, you know his fastball and his changeup where he kept the kids off. Yep. Definitely, uh, I was behind home plate, and they were all balanced, and you know he painted outside corner and. Farizo takes strike one down in the zone. So, um, but y'all's hitters hit the ball well. Um, you know, it's every game is is different with these kids today. You don't yeah. know who's going to show up. You know, so no, that's exactly the case. And you know, as we stand right now, both teams, Rummel and St. Paul's, have the same record. They're both ten and five right now, which it sounds like it's the same type of roller coaster season where. Oh, Braden Farizo with a line drive to right field, but was played perfectly by the right fielder, Dominic Mendieta, um, who steals a base hit for all intents and purposes away from James Hardwick. And that's going to bring up Cody Corrales and the top of the lineup for the Wolves. But it's been the same scenario. It's back and forth. Uh, we've won several close games. Uh, we, I think we've had seven games that have gone down to the wire in the last inning. Uh, four walk-offs. We've been walked off once, and we lost one in the top half of the of the tenth inning against the Catholic Bears, who, by the way, right. got their first loss today. But um, but.
But yeah, I can understand that Thank you, roller sir. coaster of a ride. And Corrales chases a pitch down in the dirt to break down in the dirt to bring the count to no balls and two strikes. But it seems like it's the same exact thing. Yeah, we, we saw it when we went to Texas. We played uh, Lenny. This is Ryan Gennard. Ryan Gennard. Ryan, Lenny, nice, nice to meet you. Very nice. Lenny's to meet also you. a Rumble alum. So when we went to Texas, we faced some two really good pitchers. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, those kids got to see 95 with a true 95 mile an hour fastball mm -hmm. look. One of them is an LSU signee, and ah man, this kid was lights out for St. Pius. And then we faced St. Thomas that had a, a righty that he sat at 92 and it, he was up to 94. But so oh, Corrales with that. a line drive to center field, and he's going to be retired by the center fielder, Evan Berg. Evan Berg. So the Wolves actually go down in order as well as we head to the top half of the fourth inning. Score is Rubble 2, Wolves nothing. So St. Pius, 95-mile-per-hour pitcher. And look, Jeff, you've seen it, and I've seen it in college. When somebody says they're going to get on a man and throw 95, well, it's, it's hard. To, these kids sat at 91, 94, mm -hmm. breaking balls, 88 miles an hour. Yep. And it was just a very impressive to watch. But Rummel handled it well. Uh, I know one game, I think, when we were at St. Thomas, uh, I believe my son uh, broke the no-hitter. The kid had a no-no going, and he hung a curveball, and Aiden just kind of choked and poked and got a base hit out nice. of it. But, I mean, Rummel's kind of been putting it together ever since that as a team. But when the bats come together, it's just like y'all's team. When they come together, it's all. They're forced to be reckoned with. Well, you definitely have some thunder in the lineup. I mean, the 2-3 combination uh -huh. in addition to, you know, everyone else throughout the course of the lineup, you know, everybody can contribute something. There's not really a big hole in the lineup top to bottom. Correct. You know, and, you know, you just – you need to be able to have the hits along with the timely hits. Timely Right? Hits. Um, I know there was – a time where, you know, we got into a role where we were hitting the ball, but we weren't hitting it and getting the hits to fall at the key moments when you had right. runners in scoring position and you were driving guys in. It seemed like every time we built up an inning, we kind of let it fizzle. And then, you know, we wound up breaking out of that and, you know, we had a good game against Lakeshore. We kind of put it all together and, and kind of ran the scoreboard up a little bit. 10 run ruled them, but it was kind of one of those games where you needed to kind of see that to get the ball rolling. Yep. Um, stepping into the batter's box, speaking of, is number 44, Aiden Gennard. Aiden hit a base hit in his first at bat. I'll let you uh, kind of sit back and yeah. watch it. I know. Yeah, it, listen, it's it's hard to be dad when you're on yeah, the microphone it's, now. It's good. <laughs> he's been seeing the ball well. Uh, he had a good ball against Curtis. He put one out. Mm. And then. Uh, you know, if we can just get him to quit popping up a little bit and get on top of it. But he made an adjustment after uh, his first at bat, I mean the first game, and um, we'll see what he does. So Gennard know. takes a fastball down in the zone, bringing the count to two balls and one strike. I did say in game one, I think he looks a little thicker than you in the batter's box. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> fastball I'm not sure if he said it zone. just like that. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> He, he he's definitely different. Look, I was I was strong, but I wasn't his built. No. but I was fast. You were made way more fast twitch. Yep. That's a big swing right there. <laughs> so three balls, two strikes to Gennard, leading off the top half of the fourth inning. But yeah, you uh you were you were fast twitch. Right. You had juice too. I mean, it was. He just looks like he can put one in the light tower he up there. He can if he gets a hold of it. Fastball just misses off the outside part of the plate, and Gennard is on with a leadoff walk. Coached yes, here against you two. I, I remember oh, that. I it do remember been, that. <laughs> when Jeff awesome. put that ball out there um, in the, in the dumpster. You, I've seen some balls that I Jeff know. hit, and some of them still hadn't landed yet. <laughs> All I can say to that is I'm happy to have been hitting when they had the minus five error. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> so Kennedy squares around. Pulls it back on the on the low fastball for a ball. But, yeah, that was the golden days of baseball back in the gorilla days. It was. And what's crazy is now that we get to sit up here and watch. I get to watch my son play against Jeff's son. And, look, <laughs> it was, he has put on a display behind the plate. Oh. I mean, 
I have somebody here with me today that looked at me and was like, God, he looks just like his dad because he saw Jeff play and now him throwing the ball and picking these kids off. It's just, it's its amazing to see. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Well, the re I told Jeff. There are plenty um, of times where I want to wring his neck. <laughs> All the, uh, the 43 years I coached, I never had a catcher call their own game. Th this is special. Yes, I've been is. enjoying this for the last years. He just calls a great game, controls the field like a quarterback. So this year's a little bit different in that regard, only because, you know, last year we went through a phase with not having the pitching coach in the dugout with us, yeah. um, where he kind of forced to have to call his own call his own game. But this year, Brad Frizo in the in the dugout um, calling pitches. Kennedy hits a hard ground ball to take shortstop. Easton the ball is going to take it himself and fires for the double play. So just like that, the Raiders two up and unconventionally two down. Yep. So that helps out. Yeah, and that's going to bring up number 26, Brogan Blum, who's the catcher, hit into a fielder's choice in his first at bat. It was funny when I got out the truck, I looked on the field and I was like, oh, look. There's a line drive down the uh, right field dang. line. That's going to fall in for a base hit. So yeah. Blum is aboard. And the Raiders are not going away given the fact that they had two outs in the top half of the fourth inning. We're going to have a little pinch runner action right here in the form of number 28. Let me see if I can pull up there. Let's see. I took a picture. I hate when Is I take a picture. Ian Smith, I'm not sure. Ian Smith number Ian 28. Smith. See, you know your numbers. Uh, I got to see Brad right before the fire. I got out the truck, and I was like, wait, you're back coaching? Because last year he wasn't coaching. And right. I played against him. He's, he was a phenomenal oh, pitcher. Oh, absolutely. Just, his, his dad was a phenomenal athlete. I mean, and now his son – it, it's just crazy how it cycles, and you can get to see all these kids. <laughs> well, play. he felt he, he felt that he was, there was too much pressure. He needed to kind of back off, and I I, I didn't agree with him. I told him I, I think you should have been still out there calling the pitches, but he felt that way. Right. So it's a foul ball right there on kind of a check swing. Please, ball, don't hit me in the face type of movement right there, and uh, Mendieta. Is in a one-two count. Runner on second base, two outs. By the way, y'all really have a phenomenal setup. How y'all get to do this? <laughs> I mean, it's really nice. Well, really we, we finally got shade after three and a half years. I know it's not a pretty thing, but um, Mendieta hits a fly ball into shallow right field. Is it going to fall? Jude Roberts once again with a phenomenal play in the outfield. And winds up retiring the side on the sliding catch. I can't say enough about the outfield play from Jude Roberts. He has been doing an outstanding job. So kudos to Jude for making that play and, and ending the threat right there for the Raiders as we head into the bottom half of the fourth inning. Raiders still atop 2-0. His dad, his dad played here. I think they all might have played. He played. Did you play football at Rumble at all? I stopped after my freshman okay. year. Did you, you didn't I played yeah. all the way through my junior year, and then the spring of my junior year is when I told Jay Roth that I was going right. to step down, went back out. Well, his dad, Dave Roberts, uh -huh. um, Jude's dad, was a fantastic athlete, really good. He played, he played some baseball, but football was his game. So Jude, Jude's a good ball player. He really is. Helped us a lot out there in the outfield. And he, and he does a good job on the mound for us. Yeah, he does. He does. He gets out there and throws, man. He's got a good, strong arm. He's an athlete. I mean, he just, the, the ball that he tracked down in game one, man, he, like I said, he's looked like a defensive back, the way he was opening up his hips, kind of rearranging his body based on the flight of the ball. It was really impressive. Y'all so, got a new coach coming next year. Yes, we do. Christian Gibby. He's walking around the uh, the back side of the plate right now. Okay. Yep, okay. yep. And uh, Coach Mick is retiring. Speaking of Coach Mick, we do want to send a special shout-out to Coach Harry Nunez as he continues to uh, to fight off uh, Alzheimer's. And uh, our thoughts and prayers are with him. Coach, we're, we're thinking about you. And uh, hope everything is okay. We got Harry's Hitting Building right behind us, yes. named after Coach Nunez, who spent uh, what I'd say twenty years here. Is that what about it? Uh, no, long? it was longer than that. He, longer? He, he well, he started in '81, uh, came back in '83, and he's been 
was here until he had to uh, stop because of um, the illness. Gotcha. But so it has to be. It's. Yep. Well over 30 years. Oh, wow, man. A legend over here at St. Paul's. As Easton LeBlanc takes a breaking pitch down in the, down in the dirt for ball one. Well, as you mentioned that, Jeff, you talk to people from the New Orleans area. You mentioned Harry Nunez, Nunez's name. People cringe. <laughs> oh, they cringe. If you know somebody older from the New Orleans football, they'll tell you Harry Nunez would hurt people. Go back and hurt them again. <laughs> I mean, he was just that kind of player. Football guy, huh? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Nice. And baseball. Yeah? Yeah. All right. That I didn't know. Yes, he was I a good I've baseball just always player. known him as the baseball coach here. So one ball, two strikes to LeBlanc. No, he was the head He was the head football coach here. He was the undefeated football team. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep, 1992. Okay. okay. I did not know that. So 2-2 two -two count to Easton LeBlanc. Fouled straight back. Seemed like he was on time with that when he, he just was. fouled it straight back. He was. He just got under it a mm -hmm. little bit. So where do you guys go from here? Well, I believe we got to play St. Aug starting uh, next week. So, okay. Um, we, just like I said, we won our first two district game, first two district games. It was great. Now we got to settle in after this and figure out what we got to yeah. do to win the next two. You know, what about you guys? So after today. Oh, Easton LeBlanc chases a fastball that he knows he shouldn't have swung at for strike three. And the first out, you can tell by his reaction, he's kind of mad at himself. He wants that one back. It's going to bring up Brennan Villa, the designated hitter for today. He hit into a fielder's choice in his first at bat. But uh, we got a tough road. Uh, we got uh, Live Oak on Tuesday. And then on Friday evening, we head on over to Zachary. Go play those guys. As uh, Brennan LeBlanc, uh, Brennan. Villa takes a breaking pitch down in the zone for ball one. Yeah, Zachary always has a good squad. Oh, yes. yes. We played, no, we didn't, did we play them? I think we did. In their yeah. tournament, we played them. I think we beat them. Uh, but it was a close game. You did. I want to say it was seven we to did. four. Yeah, we beat them. But they always have a good program. Absolutely. Live Oak is always really good. Um, they've got a really beautiful stadium. So Brendan Villa with a line drive into right center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. So Brennan. So Villa hits safely. It's going to bring up Cooper Winchester, who grounded out to the pitcher in the first at bat. And it's so crazy to watch Cooper get up in a box, seeing him from this side, because, <laughs> listen, he's got the same build as his father, and I'm used to seeing his father on the other side. But <laughs> Cooper can go both ways, and it's that's very impressive to do. No, he's, he's still struggling to try to get into a good groove this year. I mean, it seems to be such an up-and-down thing for him. First pitch swinging fastball fouled back into the catcher's mitt. He's got to be excited uh, and itching with going to uh, Air Force, correct? He is. He is. I don't. I don't know if he he really truly <laughs> understands what's he waiting for him as a line drive into in two. Come on, right center field. Villa is going to go first to third. Winchester hits safely. He's going to try to get to second to second base and he takes advantage of the errant throw coming in from the outfield. So just like that, the Wolves are in order with runners on second and third on the base hit and right center field by Cooper. But, um, but yeah, now nah, he, he's got basic training starting June 26th. <laughs> and uh, all I keep telling him is that you better go run. You better go do something. Yeah, he better start doing push-ups, sit-ups, um, running, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peeling potatoes maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. Right, who knows? I'll tell you what. I am it's, – it's like – that's like an honor to go play ball oh. there. And it's just – it's, it's amazing that he's going to go do that. Well, I think the, the, the part of it as a parent is knowing who you're handing your, your son off to. And Mike Kozlowski, who's been the head coach for Air Force for the last 14 years, is probably one of the most respected head coaches in all of college athletics. I mean, you hear it from, from so many people all over the place, not to mention you know, many, many of the coaches that are already coaching in the SEC who have high, high respect for Mike Kozlowski, he does such a, a great job, you know, developing leaders and, and, and getting the best out of his young men because, listen, at the end of the day, he doesn't care what you do on the field. He's making sure you're ready to go to war, right. yep, you know, and that's what he says. He's like, I'm not looking for guys who can light up any type of metric. I'm looking for guys who can lead a platoon of guys into war, and that's kind of, you know, as a parent, you feel 
pretty good and comfortable as Jude Roberts takes a huge hack right there, misses it, straight, falls it straight back to bring the count to one ball and two strikes. You know, that's just that's the only thing I you know I feel really good about is handing it over to a first class guy who is responsible for creating such great leaders of our nation's military in in the in the form of the Air Force. Yeah, and Jeff, uh, and I have that's to what tell I'm you, my dad about. been my dad been a, uh, a retired Air Force. Um, they're, they're they're getting they're getting coop, not because of his baseball talent together. That that like you said that that's the future of our country right there. Right. They're looking for people like coop, to to lead our kids into into war like Jeff's saying, and he's a prime candidate for an officer, no well, doubt about it. I've had it. the opportunity to meet a number of the different. Jude Roberts stares down that breaking pitch, doesn't offer as the count pushes to three balls and two strikes. I've met so many kids in the recruiting class, and I can tell you right now. They're top-notch kids. No, They're just great it. kids, come from great families, and I'm just happy that he has the ability to kind of, you know, play ball at the next level, but also be around a, a group of really, nice really good kids. So Jude Roberts draws the walk right there. That's going to load the bases with one out. Doesn't necessarily hurt the Raiders. It actually kind of puts them in maybe a little bit better position because now you got the double play in order. Yes. Uh, whether you come home to first, second to first, you name it, however you want to. But that's going to bring up Brodery. And, yes, I have mashed his name together. <laughs> I do that on purpose because I always get tongue-tied saying Brody Bootery. So now he's kind of like uh, he's kind of like Madonna, right? You just know him by one, one name, right? So Brodery takes ball one down in the zone. I can't tell you how many times I've said Brodery, Bodery. So I'm just like, you know what? Yeah, I think I would uh, Forget it. mess it up pretty much, too. Yeah. So Brodery takes fastball on the outside part of the plate, evening the count to one ball and one strike, one out. What was your favorite memory about winning that state championship year? What were we? We were 32-3 and three in 97, right? Was it three or two? I thought it might have been two. I would, Cooper asked me the other day who we lost to, and I couldn't remember who we lost to. It, we lost to John Curtis. Oh, that, is that who it was? I couldn't remember. Was, I think it was a Santa Mont tournament or something like that. Okay. We lost in Santa Mont somewhere. Okay. Nugent's down there. Timmy is. I don't Timmy, know Timmy, he could probably answer that. But I know somebody who's listening. That, maybe Bordes. You know, maybe Bordes will remember. Maybe somebody's got one of those rings laying around yeah. somewhere they can look at. If it. you remember, text me. The way I can figure it out. I can't but remember who we lost to. The we didn't have many losses that year, yeah, so. You know, the, the, I think the magical moment was, was all of us at the end in that circle, you know. So Brutery hits a ground ball to the shortstop. Mikey Ryan, he fields it on the run. We'll get the out at first base, but we do play to run, which cuts the lead in half. So the Wolves are on the board with one, cutting the score down to two to one. That's going to bring up Marcus Newfield with two outs and runners on second and third. You know, just watching uh, all the guys together in that moment, we all had goals that we wanted to, to do later on in life, but we settled down, we played as a team, and, you know, we did stuff that I don't – I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be very tough for our team to, to break those records to do what we did, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's... Well, there's a team right now, Catholic, who is yeah. steamrolling the league as Marcus oh. Newfield pops this one up to Ethan Fry at second base. Drifts out, makes the grab, and that's going to end the threat. But the Wolves do scratch for one, cut the lead in half 2-1 to one, as we head to the top half of the fifth inning. But Catholic did lose today. Yep. So they have one, one loss. Need they to need to lose. go the rest of the year without <laughs> losing again to, right. to, to tie that record. Right. Oh, just on cue. Where, yeah, look at Bordes. Curtis at Miley. It was a doubleheader at St. Amont lost uh, both before the playoffs. So yeah. there, you go. there you go. That was our two losses. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah, I knew thanks, you would Johnny. come through with that one. But hey, look, we, we had some very talented kids on that. But I tell everybody today, we didn't have – People say, how can you say you didn't have superstars? You had Jeff Winchester, Timmy Nugent, yourself. This was, We had a bunch of guys that played together, like Bordes at third base. I mean, they everybody. I mean, you can go down the list right, and name them all. Everybody did their job. Yeah. And that's why we won. I think you know? I, I, would, I, would, I would 
second that notion. I think we, we had a lot of people on that team who kind of knew knew how to contribute the way that they needed to contribute. Nobody kind of went above and beyond their capabilities, and that's what made it work. And right. I think that's all you can ask for in a team is each player understand what they're doing. You, not, don't, have a guy, you don't have a guy who's not going to hit five home runs a year swinging for the fences, right? I mean, right. these kids, they, I think I remember Todd being excellent at bunting Adams. Right. You know, right. he'd put a drag bunt down and beat it out. You know what I mean? It's like those are the little things that, that make a difference in a championship team. Ethan Fry is stepping into the batter's box right now for, uh, for the Raiders. Kind of checks it, but it goes foul, so it's not going to be of any threat. But that's the kind of thing you need on a team, man. you got to have everybody. That's Brant Fry. Brant Fry. What did yeah. I say, Braden? Ethan. Ethan. I'm you sorry. Are good. Ethan Fry. He plays for LSU, doesn't he? Maybe he does. Uh -huh. I said, uh, I'm sorry. I might have said the same thing when he caught the pop up a second there is ago. A fry at LSU. I don't yeah. know exactly what it is. Brant Fry. I'm sorry. We got somebody. That's what, see, that's why I got you in the booth, man. <laughs> Correct me when I'm wrong. All these waters that uh, Lenny's feeding me got my mind all jacked up. <laughs> yeah. So one ball, two strikes to Fry. Fastball misses down in the zone. Good take right there by Fry. You're in protect mode and you don't offer at that pitch. Uh, you're saying it pretty good. Another good take on a break and uh, change up it looked like. I'm not so sure I agree with that one right there. 2-2 two, two change up yeah. right there to the leadoff guy. Yeah. Fastball fouls off as we continue. That's so 3-2. Right. Little Brant Fry, he's been doing a great job at the plate. I mean, putting the ball in play, he's, he's been a little tough out. I can be, be honest with you. You know, um, he gives it everything he's got. And uh, he's a scrappy ball player, good little ball player. Yep. Fastball oh, catches wow. the outside part of the plate, and freezes Fry for the first out of the inning. That was a good pitch. That was a yes, good was. pitch right there. That's going to bring up the left fielder number seven, Ruben Ramirez. Well, I appreciate y'all having me up here. Yeah, man. It I told you I would reserve you for maybe one yeah. inning, but you kind of stayed here a little bit longer for two. So <laughs> we're going to we're gonna let you get back to I'm where you want to go. I'm getting the eyes down there saying. You getting eyes? <laughs> oh, yeah. They saying. Mama's giving you eyes? <laughs> so, but, uh, Are you talking inning? too much? One more uh, inning, he gets an honorary um, St. Paul's shirt. Yeah. You know, we have to walk change down the shirt. I'm going to walk down there with a little gold on your shirt right there, big guy. It was really nice y'all having me up here. and I can't say it again. It's just a it's it's great to be able to watch our kids play together. Of course it and is. These two schools <laughs> doing what they're doing and every year they come together and they compete now. Yes. It, yes. It's really it's it's a special special day almost. You know? I love it when they come together because you know, you know you're getting a good game. Exactly. You know you're gonna get a good one. And I'm glad I'm a hard ground I'm ball to Brodery over <laughs> at second base who scoops it up and fires the Kayami for the second out of the inning. Well I'm glad I'm alive to see your sons play. <laughs> yeah, I am. Listen, I'm glad you are too. It really is. I great looked at Frank up. the other day. We coached each other for I don't know how many years. He said, Man. I said, Yeah, Frank, you need to quit. He said, Man, I'm still ha I'm having too much fun. <laughs> Might be having a pitcher chain. Looks like it. Yeah, I wouldn't, be, limit. I wouldn't be surprised if Ferrizo is on a limit because he, he is coming off of a little bit of tenderness in his elbow. I'm not going right. to call it an injury. It's just more of a precaution. Look, he's going to go. He's going to go pitch for Southeastern. A young, strong arm. No real reason to have to push the envelope on him. Let him go get his work in. Keep him within the the, the reasonable pitch count, and uh, you know, pull him out. He's done a good job. Like I said. You can keep this lineup down to two runs. Yes. You're right. doing something really, really good 100%. on the mound. Because at any given moment, they could explode for at least six or seven on you. Yeah. But with that move to the mound, that's going to bring uh, Marcus Newfield to the bump. And we're going to have some changes. It looks like Andrew Iannusa is going to wind up coming in and uh, taking over the reins over at third base. What happened here? I don't know. I'm going to go see. Somebody must have messed with the camera or the plug. I don't know. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, we just lost the center field camera for some reason. Yeah, something happened. 
Why y'all figuring that out? I'm yep. gonna sneak back there. Well, Ryan, listen, so we appreciate it, Fat Dog. Ryan, we'll always love to talk to you, my enjoyed man. Enjoyed it. Yep. And Thanks look, for uh, when we do this again next year. I'll come see you. Okay, <laughs> absolutely. I, Jeff probably won't be here. He'll <laughs> no. be watching Coop, but I will, I will definitely come up and come see you guys. And I'll probably be over at Lake Castle because they have a tendency to play on the same day. So Carter, <laughs> Carter's over there playing for Lake Castle right now. He's going to be in eighth grade over there, so That's that'll uh, probably be where I'm at. Yep. So Fat right. Dog, appreciate it, my brother Ryan right, Gennard. Thank, thank you, you buddy. We'll talk to you guys later. All right. Bye bye. Definitely one of my favorite guys that I played ball with. Not one of my favorite guys to coach against, though. So. <laughs> wow, well, I would, I would think not. I mean, very athletic. Either one, either one of y'all. He's like this guy, Mikey Ryan. At any given moment, he could put a ball out of a ballpark. So big hack right there by Mikey Ryan from Marcus Newfield. Brings the count to no balls, one strike. Best part about this at bat: there's nobody on base. So Newfield tries to lock him up inside and misses with the fastball nice in. Nice pitch, though. I was talking to Nathan Sarkissian the other day for 2D, and he clocked Marcus Newfield at 88 miles an hour the other day. So he's running it up there. And then he can break it off like that, too. Yeah, that's, a nice that's, little slider right there. That makes an 88 mile an hour faster a little quicker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little more. So zap. one ball, two strikes, two outs right now to Mikey Ryan, who hit a triple in his last at-bat. Line drive into left center field. Jude Roberts is going to come up and fire it in here. It's, Mikey's going to slam on the brakes as he rounds first base for his second hit of the day. See, I like that right there. He's aggressively. Uh, oh, yeah. And you get a lazy outfielder. Right. Can lob that ball in. He'd be going to second base. Exactly. And that's, that, that's what separates him from the pack. Absolutely. You know, he, it's not just the physical ability. The physical ability is there. Right. But when you can... When you can amplify a physical ability with a high baseball IQ, yes. Gavin Nix drives this ball oh, to left opposite. field. Oh. Jude Roberts there to save the day. <laughs> <laughs> As he jumps, uh, he catches the ball, and with his momentum, <laughs> jumps up over the fence and high fives one of the St. Paul's player or students <laughs> sitting in the left field lounge in the back of one of their trucks. Oh, so my gosh. Look at Jude having fun in the outfield. And that's fun to watch him <laughs> track down. That ball saves the run right oh, there. Oh, absolutely. And uh, the, the, the Raiders are retired without, without scoring any runs. So um, <laughs> good for him on that one right there. You know, you love when a kid loves the game like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he's not just playing. He's loving it. You got to have fun, man. I mean, look, this game's hard enough. I will go on the record and say that this is single-handedly one of the hardest games to play in sport from a mental standpoint. Um, golf would probably be the next, the next second best, and uh, all my golfers who are listening will probably argue. And my, my rebuttal to anything that you say is, yeah, but your ball is sitting still. Well... And you got to hit a I've, still ball while we got to hit a moving ball. I, I've always said, to me, there's there's two, and I, I don't put golf in there either because <laughs> when you tell people they can't talk, <laughs> you can concentrate and hit a ball. Right. The two I have is pole vaulting. Someone pole vaulting. takes a pole uh -huh. and can run down a, a, a track and put it in a little box about that big, then take their body and go upside down. And get over that? Yeah. I mean, to me, that is about, about as hard to do. You know what? I've never thought oh, of that until Jeff, you said think that, about it. it is. There's so many mistakes there. <laughs> now, hitting a baseball, to me, is right up at the top, too. Yeah. Because the pitcher doesn't just throw fastballs. See, I'll so, Kayemi takes a big hack. For all the young kids out there, this kid right here on the mound for Rummel, he, I bet he's not throwing 72 miles an hour. And Avery Williams, yeah. yeah. And, and he has just had control of his pitches. Well, it's like John Montour. Like when yes. we talked about it a second ago. Kayami hits a soft ground ball over to Fry at second base. Is easily handled and thrown over to first to Gennard to retire the leadoff hitter for the Wolves in the bottom half of the fifth inning. So it's going to bring up Andrew Iannusa. I think our transmitter is down. Oh, wow. In, uh, in center field, which is causing a problem. I think Lenny's trying to figure that out right now. So Ianusa steps in the batter's box for his first at-bat of the day. Hitting for Braden Ferrizo. 
And Andy Newsom See, pops it just... up to the infield. Should be an easy play for Mikey Ryan. And just like that, we got two outs. See, he's just kept us off balance. Um, Who's the pitcher we were talking about for Atlanta just a while ago through 86 miles an hour? Greg Maddox. He's the Greg Maddox of the high school team right here. Yeah. <laughs> Not throwing hard, just hitting his spots. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's a very big compliment right there. I mean, he has just done such a good job. So Cody Corral is stepping into the batter's box, representing the top half of the lineup for the Wolves. Takes a big hack against a, uh, a first pitch breaking ball by Williams. I guess our transmitters are not firing on all cylinders. Lenny says that there's, it's working. I don't know why it's not picking up a signal. Is there something that's blocking it? I don't know. So Corrales drives the ball into right center field. And it's going to be caught by the center fielder, Berg, who comes in at the last second and scoops it up. So Corrales goes down, and the Wolves go down in order. So it's still 2-1 to one heading into the top half of the sixth inning. I guess, so what was the score of the first game? I, I guess our, our transmitters are overheating because they're in the... So, Jeff, the score the of the first game was 2 nothing. It was 2 nothing. Yep. We're going to have a dilemma here. I <laughs> know, right? Yeah. Most scored runs is going to uh, hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rumble wins this one. Right. <laughs> it's going to be... If they win it 2-1, to <laughs> one, you might have to work... St. Paul's wins it. Resort to flipping a coin. <laughs> Let me see if I can... I don't know if this works or not, but. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, ah. Uh. You know, I do, I think we do need to mention for, for Rummel, just, just to be that it kind of catches them in a bad spot. They're in district right now. So Yeah. Uh, they're one, two, and three, and maybe even four won't, won't be on the mound. So, um, you know. Well, that is true. Uh, um, you are kind of like scheduling games for them amongst. Right. Their, but for St. Paul, this is district. a great thing. Yeah, I mean, this we'll is take great. advantage of it. Yes, absolutely. You know, as Newfield... Who is this? Uh, that's not Newfield. Newfield's on the mound. Um, number nine, Evan Berg, who with a base hit, leading off the top half of the sixth inning for the Raiders. It's going to bring up Aiden Gennard, who is uh, two for three today. Hit a double and a single. I'm sorry, one for two today. Sorry, one for two with a single and a walk. I'm sorry, one for one. Jeez, I'm looking at too many numbers over here on my <laughs> sheet. So one for one with a single and a walk. It has just been a gorgeous day for baseball. It really has that. been. At heap filled. It's probably frying my equipment, but uh, kind of what happens. So Gennard hits a soft liner to the oh, shortstop. Easton LeBlanc. For the second out of the inning. No, I'm sorry, for the first out of the inning. First out, first out. So line up six. It's going to bring up number 12, the designated hitter, Gavin Kennedy. As I bring up Heap Phil, well, Brother Harold Heap. That's who the Phil's name is. Is that who it is? Yes, Brother oh, okay. Harold Heap. Uh, the Heaps were a really big, big family for St. Paul's, and he was a brother here that took care of everything, did all the maintenance. So breaking pitch misses upstairs to Kennedy for ball one. I wonder if we can tighten up the image from that camera here just to kind of get us a little bit closer. Looks like the transmitter. Fastball misses downstairs, 2-0. Oh. I didn't know who that, that was. Yep, he was a brother in, uh, 
in the eight, well, he was here a long time, but um, he used to take care of the fields. He was just, he was a, a, a jack of all trades. So a fastball gets in on Kennedy and he fouls it to the third base dugout over there by the Wolves bench. So two balls, one strike, one out. What's it saying? Is that what that means? Yeah, okay. Well, see if we can cool it off somehow. Newfield fires. Once again, Kennedy is late on the fastball. So 2-2 two -two to Kennedy. He's bringing it. Yeah, he's running it, running it up is, there. I mean... Another fastball fouled off. It's going to be out of play. I tell you, the one thing you can't do right here, you can't give in, and you can't throw him something soft. Right. So that he gets the barrel head out there. Yeah. I mean, it is a textbook display of being late on the fastball, and I think he just got to stick with it until he proves that he can beat you. A ground ball to the shortstop, Brutery. I mean, second baseman, Brutery. We're going to get the fielder's choice, the out at second base. Kennedy is going to make it to first, so still got a runner on first base as he does run well. So Kennedy, fielder's choice. It's going to bring up Brogan Blum, who is one for two on the day with a base hit down the right field line. Fastball catches right the now. outside part of the plate. The only thing here is... Marcus has got to be a little bit quicker to the plate. He kind of sits a little too long on that backside, and Kennedy runs really well. If he's not quicker to the plate, he's going to wind up taking that bag. We've got to be a little bit quicker to the plate. Snap throw to first base by Cooper, and it winds up a little bit late. Kennedy gets back with really no problem. So one ball, one strike, two outs. I think I'd be taking a chance right here. Breaking pitch, another oh, man. base hit down the right field line. James Hardwick is going to get the ball, fire it into the plate, keeping Blum to a s single. It advances Kennedy up one, and Blum's wearing out that right field line. I'm telling you. This is going to bring up Dominic... Mendieta. No, excuse me. We got a pinch hitter here. Let's see. Number 22, Lenny gotcha. Klein, who's coming in. He's going to pinch hit for Dominic Mendieta. Uh, he was in the lineup the first game, wasn't he? Yeah. Was, was he catcher? Um, yes, he caught in the first game, yes. So the brain's not totally dead on Coach Mald. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You're on top of it, Coach. <laughs> so two outs, runners on first and second. The Raiders are up two to one. Marcus Newfield on the mound for the Wolves. Fires, gets in on the hands of Klein right there and fouls it down the first base line into the dugout. Marcus wants to get together with Cooper and discuss. I'm telling you, he, his ball has got some giddy up on it. It they're does. Not, they're not getting around at all. No, uh-uh. No, and the ball that got put in play by Klein, I yep. mean by Kennedy, wasn't a changeup of some sort. Maybe a changeup or a backdoor breaking ball, but I mean, when you see that, I mean, we got to start keep pounding in. Right. Until he pulls the ball down the line, I mean. Yeah, don't give him a chance. Fastball inside. Yeah. There we go. 0 2. I'm still doing the same thing. So 0 2, maybe not. Maybe a little bit further in. See if we can get him to chase here, but we definitely don't want to get him to be able to put any type of barrel on the ball. Yeah. You don't want him to get a, a, just a lucky swing on a curveball or a changeup. Yeah. Bloop it somewhere out there. He's got to earn this one. Mm -hmm. Either breaking pitch way off the plate. Or a fastball uh, up, up out of the yep. zone. Fastball! Right and he Klein yes. swings through it for strike three, stranding the runners on first and second. And we're heading into the bottom half of the sixth inning with the score Raiders 2, 
Wolves won. And once again, we find ourselves in a situation that we found ourselves in about seven times already this year where it's tight going into the bottom half of the last innings. I mean, if anybody's been conditioned enough to be able to handle the stressors of playing in close games in the bottom half of the last, it's the Wolves, I gotta, I gotta say. I mean, yeah. I'm not so sure too many teams have actually gone right. into the last inning as many times as we have. See, Jeff, the good thing too, we talked about this earlier, we got a one, one, one game, one run game right now. St. Paul's gets on, gets a guy on, we bunt him over. Yeah. See, two, two runs, you can't do that. You know, we're yeah, we down by one, so we can get the first guy on, you know, so get him that, over. The thing that I remember my manager telling me is, like, when you're at home, you play for the tie. When you're on the road, you play for the win. And the reason being is because you play for the tie because you know you're wound up getting that last at bat. That's right. That's exactly right. You got to play for the win if you're the visiting team because you're never guaranteed that last, you know, that last That's opportunity. Right. So, um, it wouldn't surprise me if we see a little small ball coming oh, into absolutely. play, especially if we get runners on base with no outs. Centerfield camera had a chance to cool down. I don't even think it was the camera as much as it was the transmitter sitting on top of that black box over here underneath the underneath the uh, okay the tent. So gotta, gotta, gotta. heading into the bottom half of the sixth inning, and we got LeBlanc, Villa, and Winchester. That's what we need. Williams still on the mound for the Raiders. I mean, if you're asking a kid to chew up some innings My because gracious. you're in the middle of district and, you know, your starting pitcher for game one went down probably a little prematurely then. Oh, here we go. Here hard we ground go. ball to third base. Knicks couldn't handle it. That's what we had right Bobbles there. the ball. Easton LeBlanc winds up beating it out. So the Raiders catch a break right there on the error by Gavin Nix. So Le the leadoff guy is on. It's going to bring up BV, Brennan Villa. So here's the scenario we were just talking about. Right. Get the first guy on. I know he's a number three hole batter, but you gotta, yeah. you gotta get Coop up. Yeah, but even if he gets him over with a base open and you know you, they might. you, you may they might. Very, you may very well wind up just intentionally walking whoever it right. is That's right. with one out. You know, you got a very solid middle infield. You got a an LSU commit over at shortstop, and we're just gonna oh, wind up stealing. He's safe. Oh, the my throw goodness. took him up the line, and so the Wolves wind up catching a break as the throw that took him up the line was not in time. Was it a delay? I mean, no, I think it was, it was a straight up steal, or maybe it was a delay, or you know what? Maybe LeBlanc just misread the fact that he Might have wound been up. run. Yeah. Maybe, possibly. Yeah. But. Frankie Cazzo is going to argue that Mikey Ryan swiped at him. And it's hard to see from our angle, which we have the same perspective as Frankie. And it would be easy to think in the line of view that, that Ryan wound up catching LeBlanc on the swipe. But the umpire standing 15 feet away from the plate says no dice. And so we wind up stealing the bag, which is a gift and uh, Brennan Villa's up, and chances are he's probably going to wind up squaring around if he was going to square would, around before. I would think. Chances are he's going to do it again. Villa squares, takes it with him. Oh, the ball is just foul. See, I, I've got to believe something. Some, but somebody but missed something on that one or something. Yeah, Villa missed it because here's the thing. He's squaring around trying to pull the bunt with him to the charging first baseman who has an easy opportunity to get the guy out at third. Villa needs to be able to square around early, set the angle of the bat, bunt the ball to Nix over at third so that he has to field right. it versus be there to put the tag on the tying run. But I, I was talking about the previous play on a straight-up steal. Yeah. Some, somebody had to, because taking a chance on a steal instead of butting the ball down. So there's the butt he offers. 
Well, so we got a one ball, two strike count. And if there's any team in the league who's known for bunting with two strikes, it is St. Paul's. So it would not surprise me at all to see Brennan Villa square around with two strikes. <laughs> he's well, Jeff, the one thing good, the statistics, you know, he's not at first, so he's at second. So you got a better chance of moving him over right? if you have two strikes with a guy at first base. But we so. definitely got to be able to execute this. That's this right. This is a gimme right here. We need the runner yes. on third base That's exactly right. with less than two outs. And Villa takes strike three. So now with one out, can put it on first. It would not surprise me one bit if we saw an intentional walk, only for the sole fact of giving the defense a better opportunity to turn two. Mm. But if they're going to pitch to him, yep. we'll take it. They may pitch around him. Yeah, you don't have to offer up a strike. You know, the old unintentional, intentional walk right. here. And what it does is it just puts your, it puts your defense in a better situation. It does. May, may throw some off-speed pitches. May get Coop to swing at a bad pitch, get him down. Then they could walk him if you he, if he fall behind. Yeah, I mean, he has gotten himself out on many occasions this year. Case in point, there's a fly out to right field. Center field. Oh, we should That's go. <laughs> <sighs> yep, so Frankie Cazzo pulling all the right cards, getting Cooper to pop out. And that's going to bring up who we got here is uh, Jude Roberts. Should have known by the song. I mean, the poison, right? I mean, that's, that's his song. Okay, Jude, make him, make him regret this now. So Roberts offers at the first pitch, fouls it straight back. Tying run at second base. Same thing. Fouls it straight back. Winds up hitting into the batter's cage behind us. So Jude finds himself in a quick 0-2 count. So no balls, two strikes, two outs. Base open at first. Williams doesn't have to do anything, really. I mean, you just have to see if he gets, see if Jude can would chase an out, chase a bad pitch. He fouls it off down the right field line. It's going to be out of play in foul territory. O2 on Jude Roberts, two outs, bottom half of the sixth inning. Raiders up two to one. Jude is in straight up BG's mode. He's staying alive. <laughs> on cue. Come on, Jude. Easton with some pretty decent speed over at second base. You gotta believe he's rolling on anything hit. Breaking pitch misses upstairs for ball one. So one ball, two strikes, two outs to Jude. Tying run, 180 feet away. Wolves took game one. Looking to try to make a clean sweep of it. He's out. Breaking pitch freezes Jude Roberts there. And Jude goes down swinging, so the Raiders wind up getting out of that inning without giving up any. So we go ahead to the top half of the seventh inning, and the score is 2-1 to one in favor of the Raiders. Heading down into the, the home stretch here, bottom ha top half of the last inning, unless the, uh, the Wolves have the ability to score one or more. 
I mean, it, it, it's been a nice day here. It oh seems like goodness. it's been. Seems like it's gone by fairly quick. Well, it has. It's only 4.30 right now. Right. Oh, shoot. You know what I didn't check on? Let's see. I going to check in and see if uh, Tigers are playing. Because I think uh, Caden Anderson was first up in the bullpen, according to Karina. So maybe he wound up, maybe he wound up getting in there. I don't know. So Brant Fry in the batter's box leading things off in the top half of the seventh for the Raiders, who lead two to one. Marcus Newfield missing down and away on both instances. Come on, so two eight. balls, no strikes. Got to keep them off the board here. So a quick 3-0 and count. LSU's up 5 nothing against Mississippi State. So a leadoff walk to Fry. Puts a runner on first base. Is that in Starkville? It is in Starkville. Okay. Looks like bottom of the second inning right here. Mississippi State took one away from LSU last night in a convincing fashion. It's 5 nothing up there. Is this going to bring up Ruben Ramirez for the Raiders? Fry with a leadoff walk. Fastball catches the outside part of the plate to even the count. I'm sorry, puts us ahead, 0-1. Ramirez 0 for 3 on the day, a strikeout, a line out, and a ground out to second. Snap throw to first base. Fry gets back in time. Runner safe. So one ball, one strike to Ramirez. So we've got to be a little bit quicker to the plate. Squares in around. Air, in the air. Oh, and a diving oh, play by Kayami. Catches it for the out. Ramirez with a, I guess he tried to push bunt it, but pushed it hard yes. enough to where Kayami had, he could lay out and catch the ball in the air. So Wolves catch a break right there in the form of an out with a runner on first base. The bunt is unsuccessful. We're going to call that a, like a weak line out to third to first. So L3. Although it doesn't bring up much relief. Mikey Ryan stepping in the batter's box. Swings and pulls it foul for strike number one. Fast game. Fast, get, fast switch game. Could have let it hit. Right. He's got the guy in a, in a, in a pickle. Uh, yeah. But that's hard for a kid to think Yeah. About. Yeah, that is a... Uh, that is a tough play to think about in that half half a hey, second that you have. A big does. swing right there by Mikey Ryan, he, although he does find himself in an 0-2 count. Come on, got to be smart right here with this. Oh, Fastball, yes. uh, breaking pitch on the outside part of the plate. Freezes the LSU commit, Mikey Ryan, for the second out of the inning. Good call. So you got through one tough part of the lineup, and then you get rewarded with Gavin Nix, who's the La Tech commit, who already has an RBI in this game, I think because he hit the ball to second base. It got past Brodery, and wound up scoring, they wound up scoring nice a run in that game. In that, uh, that inning, so. Nix is two for three with two singles. I'm gonna fly out to Jude Roberts which would have scored another run, but Jude made a great play. Marcus Newfield just misses with a fastball in, so two balls, no strikes, and two outs. Two good pitches. Two good pitches. Very yeah. good. Tigers tightened up back there. Good. 
Nice. Off speed pitch nice. right there. Gets Nick swinging through it. Good pitch right there and a very aggressive hitter's count right there. So 2-0, traditionally you're thinking as a hitter, I'm gearing yes. up, I'm ready to go. Marcus pulls the string and gets him to swing out of changeup. Another. Oh. Ooh. Just foul down the line as Kayemi tried to make a play on that. So it's 2-2, two, two, two outs to Gavin Nix. Go back to the 2-0 pitch. Coop's the only one in the, in the in the ballpark that's new 2-0. Changeup was going to do that. I mean, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone changeup there. Yeah, that's a that's a brave call. That is a very good call. Uh -oh. I'm guessing the, uh, the headset probably went out of battery. Oh, and we oh, botch it. And we botch it. My goodness. And we botch it. Let, so the, let the umpire off the hook. In this game, I've seen three nonchalant throws that have resulted that have resulted in bad throws. And the irony is each of the players thought that they had it in the bag yep. and tried to make a nice, easy throw, and it got mishandled instead of just making a firm throw and getting the out. Nick's with a scorch. Oh, oh another man. one. Like, throw hey, can we throw the ball, the ball please? Let's go. Jeez, some Pete's. I'm sorry. I'll man. yell it out from the booth, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That's about four or five this game. He's Golly, like, another uh, one. Let's go. So the only thing I can say when Marcus went to throw it to second was they yelling bulk over here. Did he think he really bulked and then didn't want to throw it, but then the kid was there, so he uh, threw it. Yeah, uh, but he you would, know what? He's, he would, the, he's yeah. not listening. He can't hear. Nobody can hear gotcha. anything. Nobody can hear it. When you're on the field, uh, to all those parents who think you're going to yell something and they're actually going to hear it, yeah. they're gotcha. not yeah. hearing it. They didn't even hear me <laughs> yell at them just now. They're not hearing that. So all you mamas and daddies that are you got travel ball kids, listen, you yelling in the stands, nobody's listening to you <laughs> except the people who are aggravated having to have to listen oh to you sitting God. next to you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody's hearing you. <laughs> So I don't think that really had an effect on okay, them. No. Okay, okay. But they just, I mean, they just kind of like nonchalantly. Yeah. It's almost like I don't want to throw it away, so I'm going to kind of go easy. And then by going easy, that's where you make the mistake instead of saying, hey, I do this all well, the time. What did he balk? I'm going to fire. I didn't see I a didn't balk. I didn't see the balk. No. But he, he let the umpire off the hook. He stepped straight yeah. back. Because <laughs> Frankie's going out on the field. But what did he do? He stepped off. <laughs> I'll go argue with Frankie after him. I'm like, Boy, you're getting old. <laughs> Your eyes are going out on you. You didn't see anything right there. You thought you did, but you didn't. He thought his guy was going right. to get burned over at second base, which is why he went out there and started yelling balk. Because okay, well, for all intents and purposes, he should have been out at second base. And we're still in the same position we were last game, one one run. Yeah, well, here we go. So so Williams is oh, still on the mound. The that. He's going to go the distance right now. And Brodery is going to step into the batter's box. We do have action down in the Raider bullpen. So two to one, bottom half of the seventh inning. Fastball misses down in the zone. Yeah, if I had a closer right now, I think I would. Uh, I could use the closer Maybe get right to ready, get this yeah. one. Yeah. So we got Brodery, we got Newfield, and Kaimi. So Brodery hits a Come on, ball. ground ball to first base, easily handled by Gennard, and that's going to retire the leadoff hitter in the bottom of the seventh. So you bring up the pitcher, Marcus Newfield. Marcus takes a fastball off the outside part of the plate for ball one. Marcus way out in front, caps it down, down the apron where the, the next hitter walks up. Goes to show you how far out in front he is. So one ball, one strike, one out, down by one. Bottom half of the seventh inning. Fastball misses downstairs. Two balls, one strike, one out. 
Got to send a shout out to uh, Carter and Liam and Lance who are in the car traveling up to Starkville. Uh, so Marcus pops this one up to second base. Easy play for Fry. And that's going to retire Newfield. So with two outs, the Wolves are down to their last hitter, or their last out, I should say, in the form of Cameron Kayemi. who's lined out to left field, and he popped up to Brant Fry over at second base in his last at bat. Williams fires and delivers a strike on the outside part of the plate for strike one. I just keep, I gotta just keep patting this kid on the back right here. He's just He's doing a, his job, man. man. He's just straight up doing his job. So Kayemi hits a hard ground ball to Gavin Nix, who fires across the diamond, and that's going to do it for the third out of the inning. So the Raiders wind up taking game two at a score of 2-1. to one. The Wolves won 2-0, so I guess the trophy goes nowhere. <laughs> I guess they hold on to it. So yeah, it's, yes, yeah, it's no, a draw. Yeah, okay. So uh, I guess it's a draw to be settled next year, given the fact that uh, the third game of this of this uh, three-game set got rained out uh, last night. So uh, having a doubleheader today puts us in a Wait position a where the uh, – I think the Wolves should take it because the Wolves didn't – Right. The Wolves gave up fewer runs. <laughs> so the Wolves wound up only giving up two, two, where the Raiders wound up giving up three. So maybe, maybe, maybe it goes to how many? The the next tiebreaker yes. is runs allowed. I guess I mean, we're back to we're back to travel ball here, but. Uh, Anyway, nonetheless, two good ball games. Very right? good ball games. Um, you know, good players on the mound. We had some good sportsmanship between the two teams. As competitive as they all are, it's good to see them come together. As uh, you, you, you got the Lasallian connection between yes. the two schools, and they were able to go out there and play, and everybody was safe for the most part. Uh, prayers go out to the Perret kid who uh, came off the uh, the mound and a little bit of pain, but. Uh, but you know what? Nonetheless, two good ball games. Uh, you can't ask for more. The pitching was good. Yes. Pitching definitely kept the, the, the hitters off balance. So uh, kudos to uh, to John Montour, who went the distance in game one, got the win. And then uh, you got Avery Williams for the Raiders, who went the distance and got the win. Both, uh, well, no, John, John pitched the shutout, and Avery only gave up one run. So um, either way. A really good day at the ballpark. Looks so, like the Wolves are going to yeah. wind up keeping the trophy. Uh, I guess maybe the runs allowed was the other tiebreaker. Right. So it is what it is at this uh, point. But I have to say, Jeff and Lenny, um, they both leave here today not feeling bad about two good ball games. Correct. And yes. they're going into the next week. But they're already in district. Right. We have one more week of yes. non-district. Yes. I think they both can go home and say, you know, we two good teams played today and they split. Yes. You know, so yes, you know, and you know, we can say what we want as far as who they put on the mound versus who That's we put right. on the mound. But at the end of the day, whoever was on the mound for us had to go against their number one lineup. Absolutely. You know what? And to hold their number one lineup to two run uh, to uh, two runs on the day yeah. in two games. Oh yeah. You held that lineup to two runs. Right. I don't care who they had on the mound. That's right. That just means we got it done in fewer opportunities to score multiple yes. runs. But in the same sense, the Wolves can feel comfortable knowing that they went up against the Raiders' oh. number one lineup. Yes. And wound up only giving up two runs. You know, so um, kudos to the pitching staff for the Wolves. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, there it doesn't get easier as we continue to move forward, right? I mean, Live Oak on Tuesday night at Live Oak. And then Zachary on Friday night at Zachary. It's the last so, place I wanted to go when I coached. Yeah, was to Zachary. Right, Zachary. That's a good. I, I mean, they are the most brutal. 
<laughs> group of people I've ever experienced. Oh, really? Oh, my God. I mean, you better go there with, with earmuffs on so that you don't talk because <laughs> they are unbelievable. So they're, they're, they, ra- they, they rattle you. Oh, you know they, they are absolutely unbelievable. Okay. Because we played them a lot. Yeah. We played them a lot. Okay. And I mean. I mean, we have played them over the years, and I know they're very competitive. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they're, they're always – they're always tough to play. They got a good program over there. The guys are scrappy, good ball players. But uh, you know, before you get to them, you got Live Oak, and I know right. a number of the kids on Live Oak's team, and uh, they are as solid as it comes. Yep. You know, they play in that district over there with Catholic and uh, and those guys, and uh, that's not an easy district to navigate. And so you're, you know, you're going to get their best effort as well too. So is Denim in that that group too? I, I think they are. I think they are. Yeah. But um, but nonetheless, a good day overall. I mean, I know we split, but that's a good team over there. Absolutely. Um, and to be able to come away with a win, uh, we'll take it. We yes. played some good ball. Probably could have played a little cleaner in the second game. And maybe we gave them some opportunities to score by uh, not the cleanest of plays uh, across the board. But when it's all said and done, like I said, you kept a, a really, really strong lineup. Yes. Reduced their reduced their run production to two runs on an entire day, in 14 innings. Uh, you know what? To me, that's a respectable day, Absolutely. even though you didn't win. So, all right. With that being said, um, we're on the road for a little bit. I think we come back on Monday, um, not next Monday, the following Monday, right. where we have Slidell at home. Open so up district. We will open up district. It's time. You know, we're, or at least we're getting there. <laughs> but. Uh, Nonetheless, we ask that you continue to keep a couple people in our prayers, Coach Harry Nunez as well as Hope Kayemi, who is yes. uh, a big contributor to the behind-the-scenes, the day-to-day operations for the Wolves program. We wish her the best in her journey. Uh, our thoughts and prayers will be with the Kayemi family. And when it's all said and done, we hope to see Hope uh, back at it and maybe come back uh, hopefully for senior night. It would be yes. a nice tribute to a, a – well, she won't be here for senior night because uh, – uh, Cameron is uh, is an underclassman. So, but at the end of the day, we, we wish her the well and right. we wish her the best in regards to uh, into her journey. So, with that being said, for Coach Rick Malden and Lenny Russell, I am Jeff Winchester signing off for WPBN. Hope to see you guys not this Monday, but next Monday against Slidell.